Good afternoon and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I'd like to welcome everybody today to our uh, college tonight where we have Mark Burroughs speaking on the subject of labor. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. One, it, our, we'll have a brief announcements period, then our speaker will up to speak up to an hour or thereabouts. Then we'll have a question and answer period. After our question and answer period, we'll uh, in, enter our rebuttal period where we get to speak on or off subject for a certain specified amount of time, usually about four to five minutes, depending on the amount of people in there. And then speaker will get the last word and we usually wrap things up about nine o'clock or so. So, uh, Charlie, if you're uh, ready, we can start with the announcements um, on your College of Complexes thing. So let me know when you're ready to go. Okay, I'm ready right now, boss. All right. Well, not the boss, but, you know. All right. Well, welcome to meeting number 3,632 of the College of Complexes the playground for people who think. Okay, first of all, uh, we have relatively new Google email group. So if you wanna get announcements, upcoming programs, uh, if there's instructions there link, send a blank email to that location and you'll be all set. Uh, there also is a meetup group with only one or two meeting notices per week, not any traffic. So uh, I'd highly recommend everyone do that as well. So you keep up on the latest uh, program at the College of Complexes. Okay, first of all, also, I'd like to mention that we have presently, before I get into the schedule, two open dates, October 9th and 30th. So if you'd like to speak, or know of an individual or organization we should invite, please let me know because we would like to fill these states. Again, October 9th and 30th. Okay, although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for upcoming programs. On September the 11th, Jim Fencer, who is the founder of the uh, Scholars and Academics, uh, academic personnel regarding 9-11 will be talking on the topic of reality or illusion. So if you want to learn about 9-11, uh, we'll see you next week then. Uh, he's up from Madison, Wisconsin. On September the 18th, very important topic is how to have a green America which I know each of you wants. Uh, we, very important, this is a nationwide organization. You can read their mission, vision, and focus. They have a nationwide, very informative publication. And so it'd be good, very informative program if you care to get involved in ecological issues, which everyone should be, of course, as residents of the planet. On September the 21st, uh, the author will be returning. Um, he toured the United States at the height of the pandemic, and he's going to talk about, he discussed, interviewed many, many people. And so the topic will be America in a pandemic. So that one should be a hot one. Okay, on October the 2nd, I see that she has joined us tonight. But Jan Lee will be talking on a taste of Taoism, Taoism. So this should be a very informative program. I've actually listened to a couple lectures to refresh myself on Eastern philosophy. So I highly can recommend it. She usually puts together a very structured and informative program. Um, now we skip October the 9th, I said is open. And October the 16th, we're gonna have a very important topic is going to be on senior fraud protection. And this isn't necessarily limited to seniors. Uh, there's all sorts of individuals who've uh, 
try to fleece people. I myself actually got a telephone call today regarding my social security and that I had to talk to a magistrate, which is singularly amazing because I'm, I'm not under social security as a civil service employee, but nevertheless, a disturbing telephone call. Actually, I received two of them. These guys are out there. Watch yourselves, folks. They're, they're nefarious, and this ought to be an important one. This gentleman uh, is from DuPage College, local college, um, and uh, has a weekly radio program. Okay, in terms of two announcements, for those of you in the Chicago area, there would be something of a grand opening, they claim, at the Pullman uh, factory, the railroad car manufacturer on the south side of Chicago. If you look up Pullman, you can get the details. Usually events are at nine o'clock. If you have not been down there, uh, they've been making various progress and restoration of the factory and the neighborhood. And there's usually several events in progress, usually commencing around noon. So that's on the far south side of Chicago. If you haven't been there, I haven't been there recently, I highly recommend taking a hike down there on Monday. Now, another thing that I've been active in is a campaign in progress against an Nabisco company. The employees in six states are on strike. And I've been working social media and the organized labor community to boycott Nabisco products, specifically Oreos, uh, Chips Ahoy, and Ritz crackers. So if you, and I've been contacting various groceries and pharmacies saying, we don't want them stocking scab products, scab snacks. So, okay, please join with us and I'll turn it over to you, sir. Thank you right. very much. I just want to let uh, uh, give a shout out for our uh, Dallas campus. They're uh, meeting on Thursdays and uh, you can get to their website by uh, going back to the, uh, you can always see that from our link at our, at our college. And if you go to the uh, uh, Dallas campus website, which you can probably see, which is the Texas campus link here, you'll see they're having uh, some presenters. Uh, they're still on Zoom, but they meet on Thursdays on September 9th, what America should have learned from 20 years of wars in, their, in Afghanistan and Iraq. And they've got uh, Thursday, September 16th is also open for them. So you've got two chances to speak at the college here. And, the, you know, I haven't been to the Thursday meetings yet because my Toastmasters are uh, stuff's on uh, Thursdays. But, you know, I know Tom Barry. I've been there before and it works pretty good. Okay. Uh, I'd like to now introduce our speaker tonight um, if, he's if he's ready to go. Mark, um, why don't you introduce yourself and uh, go ahead and uh, start uh, asking, uh, telling us about your speech and what you're going to talk about. And you got the next hour or so. So please go ahead. If you need to share a screen, it's at the bottom. So thanks a lot. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, if uh, there have been some, some action out on the street, and if I need to close my window, if the background noise is too much, uh, let me know. I've been hearing sirens going by. I don't know how it comes through the mic. So if it's uh, distracting, let me know. Um, um, I won't repeat the, uh, the, the introduction that was on the leaflet. Um, oh, I guess maybe I'll sum it up a little bit. Um, I've been a uh, retired locomotive engineer, um, longtime member of Railroad Workers United, and I'll say a little bit about them. Um, I, attend, I was a delegate for the last two conventions while I was still working in 2011 and 2014. And um, one of them, I was the 2011 convention, I was able to give us fight for five minutes of floor time and uh, uh, quote Eugene Debs, uh, which got a standing ovation. So that uh, uh, that that was very um, that was very 
that, that was a highlight of my life, I would say, one of them. But um, so I've, I've been a longtime member of Railroad Workers United, and um, I'll say a little bit more about them in a second. But I'd like to start with um, the first order of business. I'd like to give a shout out to several important labor battles um, happening right now in real time on this Labor Day 2021. And um, Charlie beat me to it, but, but the, the first shout out goes to the approximately 1,000 workers uh, around the country. I think it's five or six states actually, including 325 here with the um, uh, BGTCM uh, uh, Union Local One against Nabisco and uh, the parent company Mondelez. Um, and just fighting for dignity. And um, um, there's a very important strike of approximately 1,100 United Mine Workers at Warrior Met Coal in Alabama, fighting to reclaim concessions that were stolen, stolen from them, literally blackmailed when the former company had gone bankrupt and the new one just basically put a figurative gun to their head and said, make these concessions or else we're gonna close up. And um, so now they want them back. When they see the obscene profits that they're making, they, they want them back. And, and uh, um, so that, that's, that's an important battle. Approximately 650 workers are locked out at a mobile Exxon refinery in the Dallas area. It's actually the third largest refinery uh, there. And uh, again, uh, union busting, the same story, concessions. Um, and uh, there's also an important strike. 700 nurser, nurses are on strike at St. Vincent Hospital in Massachusetts. And they've been on strike for about five months. And one of their major demands is to lower the nurse to patient ratio. Uh, and that's something that's obviously in in the general public's interest. So, um, uh, um, uh, it, it, so it, all of these strikes have, you know, big potential implications. Uh, uh, ob obviously, if the bosses win and bust the unions, um, that sets us back. If, if our class can gain a few victories, that gives us some momentum. And so uh, kind of a constant tug of war that we've been in with them for many years. There's a common thread with all these struggles outside of the respective circumstances, but it's ultimately, ultimately all about dignity on and off the job, safety, and in the case of the nurses, that safety impacts our safety. And so um, I'll, I'll leave it there. So again, like I said, there's a lot of it at stake for all of us in these respective battles. I want to say a little bit about Railroad Workers United, uh, just for anyone who's not familiar with this. Um, I'm going to quote here from the insert that we put on page two of our quarterly newsletter, The Highball, that uh, gives a brief description in history. Railroad Workers United was organized in April 2008 at a founding convention in Dearborn, Michigan. RWU grew out of decades of struggle within the craft unions for unity, solidarity, and democracy. We're carrying on a tradition of rank and file, of rank and file activity, which dates back to the 1890s and the time of Eugene B. Debs. RWU is a cross-craft interunion caucus of, of rail labor activists across North America and all rail workers of all rail crafts from all rail carriers who support our statement of principles are welcome to join in our efforts. And just to summarize our statement of principles, unity of all rail crafts, an end to enter, an end to interunion conflict, rank and file democracy, membership participation in action, solidarity among all railroaders, and no to concessionary bargaining. I'd like to introduce myself and my background, um, not so much to uh, toot my horn, but essentially to 
preemptively answer the question just in case any of you might be wondering who, who the hell am I and why the blank should you give a hoot as to what I have to say, my thoughts, opinions, observations, analysis, and conclusions. And I also feel that my, as I was kind of going over, over it, um, I, I, I really feel that my varied experiences have, have given me a very well-rounded uh, perspective uh, to, better, uh, to, to, to better be able to understand the issues that the working class faces. Um, but before I go any further with that, I want to acknowledge and reference my hero, Eugene B. Debs. Um, hopefully I'll have more to say about him later. Uh, he was a, a passionate, intense fighter for social justice with ironclad convictions based upon the interaction, intersection of his real life experiences and intellectual research that made sense of those experiences and vice versa. How his real life experiences and observations served to validate the economic and political analysis that he had become convinced of. As he spoke to the workers in the 1890s and the first two decades of the 20th century, imploring them to get in touch with their worth, inspiring them, challenging them to struggle and resist, trying to convince them of their worth and their potential economic and political power in order to challenge the plutocracy and robber barons of that day. He would stress, and this isn't a verbatim quote, it, it, it was a common theme, but he would tell them, quote, don't take my word for this, go study and research the facts on your own. And if you do, I'm confident you'll arrive at the same conclusions I have. And, and I feel this concept is, is very critical as we collectively interact, sharing our experiences, observations, engaging in civilized discussion, debating our respective opinions, analysis, and conclusions on how to move forward. There's no doubt a fair amount of common ground, uh, while at the same, same time, there's certainly different viewpoints. That said, most of us can probably agree that we are living in interesting times at best and sometimes frightening times at worst. There are days we watch the news, read the paper and ask, can it get any worse? And then sometimes the next day it, it inevitably does. But we're not here to despair. I say we celebrate the tenacity of our forefathers and foremothers, the tenacity of everyone who is resisting injustice in all its forms, locally, nationally, internationally, from police brutality to crimes against humanity around the world, from unsafe, undignified workplaces to the destruction of the environment and mistreatment, discrimination, and or oppression of so many segments of society in so many forms and manifestations. So, so I just kind of wanted to throw that, that, that out there to hopefully set a uh, constructive tone. Myself, I started working at the Chicago Northwestern Railway, which has been gobbled up by the Union, since been gobbled up by the Union Pacific at age 18 in 1974. Within a year, I'd become a locomotive engineer and I worked there till 1986 when I took a buyout. The railroads had secured an agreement they long sought to eliminate the position of firemen and they were able to do that through attrition. So engineers were getting bought out all over the country at that point in time. So for five years, I worked a variety of odd jobs and, and ended up moving to the Twin Cities for a few years. Um, I had a mixed bag of odds and ends, small scale, low intensity factory production jobs, uh, which I, I had known nothing but railroading since uh, my whole adult life. So um, for a brief while, I worked in a couple of uh, meat packing plants. One was just a, a packing house uh, with uh, prepackaged stuff, but the other was actually a slaughterhouse. And this was right around the period of the Hormel strike uh, meat packers in Austin, Minnesota, which I'll say a little bit more about that later. But there I was able to learn firsthand of the dangers of working in that industry, the conditions 
I understood why they were on strike as they were always trying to crank up the line speed and reduce the workforce. It was intense. It was one of the most intense situations I'd ever experienced. I spent some time on the inside on the production line, working in a virtual refrigerator, making certain cuts over and over as the slabs of meat came my way. But I also spent some time on the outside where we actually brought in the hogs uh, from the outside to the kill line. There were four of us and they reduced that to three and cranked up the line speed 25%. I'd heard about factories and industries cranking up assembly line speed, but, 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 but since then, up until then, my only industrial experience had been on the railroad. I simply hadn't experienced it in real life up until that point. My memory flashed back to that I Love Lucy episode where they were getting overwhelmed on the assembly line of a candy factory. That was funny, that, but that, that was funny, but, but this wasn't. I ended up getting fired from that, that job, and that's the only job I ended up getting fired from. And I got to tell you, even though I needed the job and I needed the money, uh, it was actually a relief. I actually celebrated that day. Another interesting experience I had, I worked part-time at a short-line railroad based in the southwest part of the state. These short lines, uh, what they were called, they popped up after the deregulation craze in the 80s where the big major class one railroads would abandon rural lines or, or sell them to sometimes real legitimate ma and pa small scale capitalist wannabes. But more often than not, they were just glorified paper shuffles where the ownership and investor still remained intact, but, but the, the workforce was let go. Uh, the union was essentially eliminated and then people could get hired back uh, at drastic cuts in wages, working conditions and with no union. Um, and sometimes uh, in, in some cases, uh, big investment companies would buy up a whole bunch of short lines and, and run them as well. But because they were non-union and virtually unregulated, they ended up serving as a laboratory to experiment with future changes in the work work rules that would end up being implemented in the industry as a whole. So today, rail labor is in a pitch battle to hold off the implementation of single employee engineer only trains. As far back as 1987, I experienced engineer only. The engineer would run the train by himself and the conductor would drive around in a truck to spot various uh, rural industries and, and grain elevators. So back in 2014, I, I think it was when the Burlington Northern proposed a tentative agreement for single employee crews, which included a master utility conductor that drove around the countryside in a truck to help out the lone engineers wherever they might be when necessary. That sounded very familiar, like, yeah, been there, done that. I finally ended up at the port Ford production plant making Rangers and F-150s. They were always trying to speed up only with a little more subtlety. They would take three jobs and combine them in, in, into two. So you had to do a little bit more work, speed up the line just a little bit to see, just to push it to the max to see if you can handle it. In the late eighties, I ended up in Northwest Illinois for a couple of years and the only work available was that as a carpenter apprentice. I got some training through the carpenters union, which was cool. But it was also quite an experience because up until then, my whole work experience had been adversarial. It was always us, the workers against them, the bosses. Uh, that, was, that was all I knew about working as an adult. And whereas the carpenters union pitch was union carpenters do it better. So they promoted work better, work faster, work harder, work more efficiently to show the boss that it's in their interest to hire union carpenters. So needless to say, there was no adversarial relationship, just competition among all the, all the many union carpenters to see who could be the most badass workers and those would be the ones who would get hired. Now that was many years ago. I can't speak for what the state of, the, of, of those uh, trade unions are now. And that was only a small sample size, uh, but it was very eye-opening to say the least. So five years later from the time I left the Chicago and Northwestern, 
the railroads had all cut themselves to the bone and were ready to start rehiring many of the engineers that they had bought out five years previously. In fact, when I got hired on the Sioux Line, which had been formerly the Milwaukee Road and now better known as the Canadian Pacific, the whole class that I was hired with was all experienced engineers off the street who had taken the buyout in 1986 and were now looking for work. So we're here Labor Day. And so since we're recognizing Labor Day, let's talk about its origins. And anyone who heard me speak the last time knows that I'm very opinionated about this and that I consider this Labor Day and the, however it's designated, the first Monday weekend of September to actually be a sham and a fraud. Our Labor Day should be the same Labor Day for the rest of the working class around the world. And that's May Day, May 1st, International Workers Day. Once upon a time, it was our holiday. In the aftermath of the struggle for the eight hour day in the mid 1880s, culminating with the Haymarket Massacre here in Chicago, May Day, International Workers Day, ha has been celebrated around the world and in large part to honor the martyrs of the Haymarket Massacre and, and celebrate that struggle for the eight hour day. May Day was our Labor Day in this country up until the aftermath of the Pullman strike. And it's noteworthy that the Pullman National Memorial is actually opening this weekend. Obviously, I haven't got a chance to go down there, but I, I saw, I saw a, few, a few brief clips about it on the news and saw pictures of uh, saw pictures pertaining to the Pullman strike and, and even a big picture of my main man, brother Eugene himself. The guide being interviewed for a, a minute soundbite made reference to the Pullman strike and how Labor Day came out of it. So I, I wanna actually quote from the actual website of the Pullman National Monument. And uh, I'll interrupt myself for a few corrections, clarifications in real time that I just feel need to be uh, stated for the record. But this is, uh, th th this is actually from the website uh, for the Pullman Memorial National Monument. In 1894, when manufacturing demand fell off, Pullman cut jobs and wages and increased working hours in his plant to lower costs and keep profits. But he did not lower rents or prices in the company town. The workers eventually launched a strike. When violence broke out, he gained the support of President Cleveland for the use of US troops. The strike and boycott shut down much of the nation's freight and passenger traffic west of Detroit. The newly created American Railway Union was led by Eugene Victor Debs, a pacifist and socialist who later founded the Socialist Party of America. All right. Got, got correction number one, got to clarify this. Debs was not a socialist at this point in time. He would explain it very clearly in his writing, How I Became a Socialist, that, that while he was in jail up in Woodstock, as a consequence of his leadership in the Pullman strike, and many supporters, socialists of the day, uh, mailed him, visited him, and gave him socialist literature for him to peruse while he was to, to make constructive use of his six months. And it was there that he studied and, and applied what he was reading to his experiences. And that's when he became a socialist. And that's right, right from his own uh, description. So um, had to clarify that uh, um, he wasn't a socialist at the time of, of the Pullman strike. Um, but anyway, getting back to uh, uh, the, uh, the website's uh, depiction of events, under the leadership of Debs, sympathetic railroad workers across the nation tied up rail traffic to the Pacific. Strikers and Debs gave Pullman five days to respond to the union demands, but Pullman refused to negotiate. On June 26, all Pullman cars were cut from trains. When union members were fired, entire rail lines were shut down and Chicago was besieged. 
One consequence was a blockade of the federal mail. Violence broke out between rioters and federal troops that were sent to protect the mail. All right, time for another clarification break. At the request of the rail carriers and the big business, big businesses, President Cleveland ordered the federal militias to break up the strike under the pretext that they were disrupting the US mail. I mean, in my personal opinion, if the situation truly called for government intervention, the power of the government could have been used to impose a just settlement for the Pullman workers and, and to ensure that the, that the railway workers could be able to return to their job with no discipline or blacklist. Um, but that's obviously not how it turned out. Um, so anyway, back to the uh, website's version of those events. By the end of the by the end of the July of July, 34 people had been killed. The strikers were dispersed. The troops were gone, and the courts had sided with the railway owners. And Debs was in jail for contempt of court. Pullman's reputation was soiled by the strike. In 1894, in an effort to conciliate organized labor after the strike, President Grover Cleveland and Congress designated Labor Day as a federal holiday. Legislation for the holiday was pushed through Congress six days after the strike ended. So with the exception of those few corrections, that's a pretty accurate telling of how, of, of, of how what we know as Labor Day came into being. I mean, it's expected that the politicians would continue to perpetuate this sham and fraud, but for the leadership of the AFL-CIO to continue to be complicit in this is a betrayal of their stated mission and the working class that they claim to represent. By running 180 degrees in the opposite direction, of educating the working class about the need for international solidarity to resist the efforts to divide and conquer. Leave us that much more vulnerable to those elementary tactics. And you, a classic example, you see it as a layer of the working class gets whipped up into a frenzy about immigration that they end up voting for somebody who so anti-labor and, and who totally against their interests. Uh, um, uh, one of the reasons that Trump was so popular among the, a layer of, of the working class, as well as uh, Trump wannabes. Uh, so that's just one example of how um, uh, we're vulnerable and preyed upon with, the, with this basic divide and conquer tactic. It's obviously contributed to a significant decline uh, in international solidarity and, and an increase in, in elitism among a layer of the working class. Um, and an increase in the, in fact, back in the 80s, where the, um, the, the increase in by, by American chauvinism really took off, um, in the 80s, smashing and beating Japanese cars ultimately evolved into beating a Japanese worker to death. So that's, that, that's one end of the spectrum of how things can go when, uh, when we get sucked into uh, and, and lose, lose the concept of international solidarity. But, but the tide has begun to turn. In 2006, immigrants, uh, uh, close to 2 million workers around the US and hundreds of thousands in Chicago disrupted construction, agriculture, meatpacking and other industries dependent on, on immigrant labor. As they demonstrated, unofficially walked out, just didn't show up for work that day, whatever you wanna call it. And they began to reclaim May Day the, as the real Labor Day for the US working class. They were protesting anti-immigrant legislation, calling for legalization of the undocumented, protesting raids and deportations, and in essence, fighting, taking to the streets to proclaim, fight for, 
and assert their dignity, dignity. And when the vast majority of the working class figures out the need to follow that lead, well, then we'll be getting somewhere. And I just kind of want to make note, um, as I was researching this and, and, and just kind of going back and revisiting some of this, it, it struck me that, that back around this time, um, Hillary Clinton, while, while Bush was actually comparatively uh, 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 try, trying to modify uh, and, and, and in response to this, um, gave lip service to the concept of immigration reform, Hillary Clinton was talking about building a wall. I mean, I, mean, I, I, it, I, I, I it, it, it just struck me it, 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 it was virtually Trumpism, uh, what, what Hillary Clinton was promoting back in 2006. Um, so I, I don't wanna go off on that tangent, but it, it just really stood out to me as, as I was uh, going over and revisiting some of this stuff. So prior to that, prior, prior to that where in 2006, the hundreds of thousands around the country took May Day. Uh, prior to that, there had been little recognition for May Day uh, among U.S. workers. Uh, and since that unprecedented May Day demonstration in 2006, subsequent May Days have seen demonstrations to varying degrees, varying numbers, varying components, usually driven by immigrant immigration rights fighters in alliance with various leftist coalitions, social justice activists, and, and some progressive wings of, of the established uh, labor movement uh, leadership, uh, usually low to mid-level union leaders. Um, I mean, I've, let to, I've yet to see anything like the AFL-CIO uh, saying that we should take back May Day as our official uh, Labor Day. But uh, um, a, a, a fair amount, a, a lot of times the longshoremen's unions uh, have been involved. They've always been very progressive. And um, so, so there's, um, I, I feel there's hope. There, it, it's been uneven with, with ebbs and flows, but um, I, I just think it's very important to uh, get out and participate in, 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 in May Day uh, um, rallies, demonstrations, um, and, and to try to bring back that history. Um, in my personal opinion, we, we need more of that. We need, we need more of that and whatever we can do to expand upon this, we'll be in a much stronger position to fight for our rights and dignity when, when, when our Labor Day is in alliance and in solidarity with the working class around the world instead of a three-day weekend at home at the beginning of September for barbecues and mattress sales. Uh, it's a major challenge for the U.S. working class to reconnect with our history, to learn our history, to learn about past struggles, to learn about past resistance, to learn about past victories, to learn about past defeats, to apply the totality of all of the lessons from the good, the bad, and the ugly of our collective historical experience. Um, you know, last time I, when, when I spoke, and I, I don't want to be redundant, uh, but, but uh, it, it's worth noting that um, um, back in 1984, I, I had always been aware on top of things, was always following the news and watching the news, you know, very, very aware of current events and and very opinionated about things to, to uh, um, and um, uh, around 1980, I, I, I ran into some socialists on the job at the Chicago Northwestern and, and um, uh, after quite a bit of, uh, uh, quite, quite a bit of clashes with, you know, what about this? What about that? Everything that I had been taught to, to fear and dismiss, um, uh, um, uh, but but they, uh, uh, they 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 dealt with me judiciously, and um, and so in 1984, uh, 
as a supporter of the of the then Nicaraguan revolution, um, uh, not to dwell into what has happened since that time, that's a whole separate discussion. But at the time, it was a very promising development where the working class had taken power and was using that power in their interest. And, and, um, and so I visited the, the, the revolution for May Day and, and um, uh, I was talking with a young uh, Sandinista soldier. And when, when I told him he was from Chicago, I would, that I was from Chicago, he, he, you know, oh, Chicago, Haymarket, uh, and, 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 and I'm not embarrassed to, to say that I did not know what he was talking about um, because I was never taught that. Uh, uh, the school system, uh, even my own union, I'd been working at the railroad for several years. Um, uh, there, there had never been any attempt to teach me that part of labor history. I had to learn about the Haymarket um, or at least be exposed to it. Then when I got back, I kind of studied it to see what he was talking about. And at the time I lived over at Chicago and Noble, uh, just a few blocks from where it all went down. And I was totally clueless. And, and, and I think that's just a very telling example of, of how, how we get robbed of our history. And, and, and it's very conscious, it, it, it's very premeditated um, they don't want us to know that history. And um, um, so uh, just had to, had to point that out. Um, obviously, over the years, it, it's been ebbs and flows for labor. Um, uh, we, we've had some, probably the most significant conquest of uh, to talk about is, is the formation of the Congress of Industrial Organizations. Um, uh, the, the major battles in the 30s that, 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 that um, uh, has helped to bring us to where we are. Um, and while in the early part of the 30s, there were, there were struggles and defeats, the tide was turned in 1934 with three major battles, uh, the longshoremen, uh, San Francisco general strike, uh, the Toledo auto strike, um, and the uh, Teamsters general strike in Minneapolis that, that ultimately led to the uh, organizing of the uh, over the road uh, truck drivers and helped build the Teamsters union at that time. Um, and so uh, major conquests, um, uh, uh, have there been setbacks? Of course. Uh, uh, do we have a lot of work left to do? Of course. But uh, but but it but it's important to to uh, be cognizant of those conquests and to to study and, and learn how uh, how we conquered with, with with rank and file initiative with 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 militant leadership with. Um, uh, the same kind of determination that we see here and there in, in these uh, various struggles. In recent, I want to make note of a few recent battles of, uh, of, of over the last several years. Um, and and these are, this is just a small sample. There's, you know, there, there, there's many. But uh, uh, a few that stand out to me, um, in 1977, major coal miners uh, strike uh, that coincided with their efforts to democratize uh, their, their union. And, and one of the highlights of, of that battle um, was, was when they, uh, I think the famous line, when they tried to invoke Taft-Hartley, uh, the coal miners, the rank and file just said, uh, uh, Taft can haul it and Hartley can shovel it. Uh, that was their response to uh, uh, the attempt at, at government intervention. Um, I made reference to the Hormel strike in 1986. And, and I wanna just uh, uh, talk about it a little bit. I was not working at the time. That's when I, 
account had the buyout with the Chicago Northwestern. And I got to spend some time there, uh, participate in, in a, a, a couple of the big solidarity rallies. And, 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 and uh, there was one event where they put out a call to uh, help them shut down production. Uh, for, for those of you who are not aware, the, uh, when they attempted to shut down production to keep uh, scabs from coming in, they, they actually brought, the, the National Guard was literally encamped around the plant. When, we, when I drove up there, uh, when, when I drove up there on the interstate to, to, to get up there, um, it, it was like a war zone. Uh, just uh, uh, military vehicles just surrounding the plant. And so they, they put out an appeal to rank and file workers to help shut down production. And um, they, they, they uh, set up this ring of cars around the gate. And, and so at, at first, uh, so then they, they uh, uh, and, and we were inside, and we were inside the ring of cars and um, uh, tow truck operators came to try to move them and, and they were getting beaten by the workers. And so they backed off. And so then the state police came in and, uh, and this was intense. I, I mean, this was, uh, 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 these workers literally, a, a, as the state police tried to clear them out, uh, they were engaged in fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, uh, I was, uh, um, uh, I can't, I, I was kind of a, a layer or two behind, so I'm not going to make some boast that I, you know, uh, um, uh, I did help when, when, when there, there were, there were some instances where they were trying to ar arrest a worker and then, and then some of us would pull him back like a, like a literal human tug of war. Uh, uh, uh I, I was able to participate in that, but, um. It, it was it, it was quite an experience. Uh, eventually, they they the only way they could break us up was with tear gas, and um, and even then, when they started lobbing the tear gas, the, the the workers had masks. Some of them had masks and and mitt gloves, and and they threw them back, and and some of the state troopers went down um, uh, because they weren't prepared. They 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 just thought it was going to be a walkthrough, and 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 they. They got taken down by their own tear gas. Eventually, we had to we had to retreat, and and they won the day. Um, but it, but it was it, that experience has just always stuck with me um, for so many reasons. Um, uh, the tenacity of the workers when when they've been pushed to the wall, they they there there was just no they were going to resist. They they they, they were going to resist. Um, and this was stuff I'd read about in the history books, and I felt like I was experiencing both a glimpse of the past as well as a glimpse of our future, uh, be because they're going to keep pushing. They're going to keep pushing, um, and, and I know my experiences have shown me that workers will resist, and the, the state will resist those workers resisting, and and um, these kind of things will happen. And um, uh, so, I, yeah, I, I feel I got a taste of both the past and the future. And, and it's an experience that, that will always stay with me. Um, uh, more recently, we, we saw the, I think in 2009, uh, Black Jewel Miners, uh, that's the name of the, the, the coal mine, uh, they went bankrupt and tried to uh, uh, not pay the workers what they were owed. Uh, oh, we don't have it. Uh, so, you know, probably a couple weeks worth of wages. And they actually occupied the tracks uh, to keep coal from going in and out. Um, uh, uh, very militant, very unified, very assertive, um, um, not begging politicians to intervene. It was it was right now, and and they eventually won, and and so um, uh, uh, we, we've lost more than we've won, but but it, it's there's lessons to be learned when we lose, and and occasionally we do win, and um, 
I think one of the most important lessons is if you resist, you may not win, but you're guaranteed to not win anything if you don't resist. And finally, I want to close. Um, uh, I, I want to wrap this up with my own personal opinion. Um, in my opinion, I was convinced of this over 40 years ago, and 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 um, uh, it's only stood the test of time. Uh, that the only way forward for the working class is to find our, our way towards political independence, to break from the two-party system, uh, especially the Democratic Party. Uh, this is where workers get roped into. Find our way to the formation of an independent political party that can galvanize the working class, the vast majority of us. Um, uh, we're numerically superior. We, 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 we make the wealth, we're economically, uh, we have the economic advantage, um, and, and, and we need an independent political party with the foundation of labor in alliance with all other activists and fighters for social justice. And on that note, I just want to give a shout out. There's a, a recent organization, I think they've been in formation for the last year. Uh, I'm still checking them out myself. Um, uh, it's called the, the, P, the Movement for a People's Party. Uh, their website is, I'm, I'm not, I don't know how to do all this. I'm, I'm a technical, uh, some people have called me a Luddite. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I haven't gotten the screen share of stuff down, but um, the website is thepeoplesparty.org. Uh, they have a very, uh, very, very progressive um, uh, platform. And, uh, um, and it's an attempt to build an independent political party. It's, it's a work in progress. Uh, like I said, I'm looking into it more and exploring the possibility of getting actively involved. Um, only time will tell to see if this is the beginning of what we need, if, 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 if enough uh, like-minded people can, if we can actually build it into something and develop it into what we need to be, if it can, if it, can pass the test and challenges as they will inevitably be posed. All of that remains to be seen. But, but I, I do, um, anyone who is also thinking along these lines or at least has contemplated the thought of, of the need for an independent political party to at least, at least check it out, uh, peoplesparty.org. Um, they have some, there's some heavy hitters involved for better or for worse, such as People like Susan Sarandon, Oliver Stone, Cornel West, Chris Hedges. Uh, there's some labor involvement, uh, um, uh, uh, some, some mid-level, uh, there's an, 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 a kind of a mid-level official of the Postal Workers Union. Um, I, I, I don't have his name and credentials off the top of my head, but um, um, it's promising. And, and so all I say is I'm checking it out and, and I just simply want to give a shout out um, for others to uh, at, at least check it out and draw your own conclusions. And finally, I wanna close with um, Railroad Workers United uh, uh, generally puts out a, a, a statement and, and I just, and while it's, it's, it's geared towards rail workers, it, it um, uh, all, all, you know, there's a message in it for, for, the, for, for all of the working class. Um, uh, so this is real RWU's uh, Labor Day greetings. A time to commit to solidarity, unity, and action. Dear railroad sisters and brothers, whether you are off work or on the job on Monday, please take the time to honor, remember, and celebrate Labor Day. This is our day. So much of what we workers take for granted today, overtime pay, holiday pay, vacations, sick leave, workers' comp and FILA, social security and railroad retirement, safer working conditions, the basic eight hour day, seniority and more, only come about, only came about because workers came together, organized and fought for these things collectively. If it were not for our solidarity, we would have none of the above and there certainly would be no such thing as Labor Day itself. But Labor Day has mostly become a day for picnics and barbecues, political stumping and speech making, political posturing and quote, remembering our quote, past heritage. But what, what if we were to put some life into Labor Day? 
What if we were to take joint actions with our allies who understand that single employee crews are a danger to all? What if we were to show the corporations, politicians, and union leaders that we are not simply going to honor and remember on Labor Day? What if we were to show our power and were to picket, demonstrate, strike, and occupy? To accomplish any and all of this requires that we act in solidarity with one another. As we all know, in unity there is strength. But railroad workers have been divided by craft and group, property, and union for way too long. This Labor Day, pledge to commit yourself to boundless solidarity and unity with your fellow railroad workers going forward. Contract bargaining at the national level will commence in just two months. Critical issues of concern to railroad workers such as health care, wages, crew staffing, and worker safety will be on the table in 2020, 21. To win good contracts, it is imperative that railroad workers from all crafts, all unions, and all properties stick together in the struggle. So let's stop crying and whining about our situation while we sit on our hands and hopelessly wait for some politician, government agency, or union official to save us. RWU appeals to each and every working railroader to stand up, take the bull by the horn, speak out, and fight back. Let's make our demands known and let our power be realized. To win better wages, benefits, and working conditions, it is up to all of us working railroaders to make it happen. As the RW slogan proclaims, the rank and file in action. On this Labor Day, you will see lots of flags flying. You will hear lots of politicians bucking for your vote, and you will smell lots of hot dogs grilling. But please remember, all this has little to do with the true spirit of the holiday. Labor Day is about working people and our historic and gallant struggle through strikes, boycotts, picket lines, sit-ins, occupations, and more to further the cause of the working class. Railroad Workers United is proud to be part of this great tradition of working people fighting back against the wealthy and powerful, <coughs> excuse me, the big corporations and the Wall Street bankers. We invite you to join us in this fight. Solidarity forever. Ron Kamenko, our RWU General Secretary. So um, uh, I figure that's a good place to leave it. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, let's go, let's go ahead. Uh, well, let's uh, thank our speaker. And uh, let's, uh, let's thank our speaker real quick again for a good presentation. We are now into our question and answer period. Um, and I'd like to ask anybody who's got a question at this time to uh, Margaret, go ahead. If you got a question, please. Uh, uh, quick question for Mark. I, when did we see celebrating May 1st as Labor Day? Oh, what year was it approximately? I know some at the Pullman strike, it it was in the it was in the brief period um, uh, going back into uh, uh, it. It was after the Haymarket massacre that that was in 1986, and and and, and, and or was that 1886? Yeah, yeah, 1886, and and as, as part of the buildup, uh, uh, there had been a call. That like on on May first for for and and I, I think in that year four hundred thousand workers around the country kind of took off, went on just a, 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 a strike protest as part of the fight for the eight hour day, and and um, and so in the in the in, in the subsequent years, especially after the Haymarket massacre. Um, May Day had what was, was kind of our our Labor Day, yes. and 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 that changed that changed uh, with the legislation right after the Pullman strike in 1896. Um, that that kind of changed that that turned it over to uh, September. So it, it was that brief period uh, uh, during and in the immediate aftermath of the Haymarket massacre. The rest of the world. The rest of the world still 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 yeah. goes with that. And I just thought that it I was more inclined to think it had to do with the Cold War against communism. And we did not want to support May 1st because that had 
quotes, communist, close quotes, connotations. But it really happened a lot earlier before we, before World War One even. Yeah, I, I, right, right. It, it, it uh, uh, um, uh, certainly they have, you know, since that time and, and in the, you know, as the Cold War developed and, and as, you know, uh, when it got to a point where you could say, you know, see those commies uh, on May Day, you know, that certainly added more, more fuel, you, you, you know, but, 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 but. Uh, 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 I can but, remember my aunt taught in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and she was very much English drama, et cetera. And they would have a May Day crowning of a young man and a young woman as king and queen. This would have been in the 40s. And so, you know, now we don't really hear much about it, except in the Catholic Church at May 1st, May is Mary's month. And so it's a big deal. But I just thought that we stopped celebrating it more because we didn't want any association with communists. But you've been, this has been very helpful, Mark. I've loved the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the whole anti-communist thing conveniently came in afterwards. <laughs> I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Burroughs for reminding us what Labor Day is about. <laughs> mm -hmm. hey, Mark, I have a question here, a for sure question. Um, what, is, what is the purpose of a conductor on a freight train? That I can't wrap my head around that. And I ride a passenger commuter rail train every day. Now they have conductors because they have to go up and down the aisles, you know, punching tickets and things like that. But what, what does a conductor do on a freight train? Well, on a freight train and, 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 and uh, even on the passenger train, the, the, the conductor does a lot of the same work only. Um, uh, but but there, there, there's all kinds of paperwork uh, 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 be, be, before you start your trip. Um, there's speed restrictions. Uh, um, uh, you know, may, maybe a, a, a section of track has been downgraded from 60 to 35. So from point A to point B, 35 miles an hour. Uh, you've got track workers uh, from this milepost to that milepost. Um, uh, stop un unless you get an okay from the from the track foreman, or you could run over a bunch of track workers. Uh, so so there's there, there, there's track bulletins. There's speed restrictions. Um, uh, uh, knowing what's what's actually in the train, Some, sometimes you're stopping and making making pickups. Uh, you're, you're, you're or you're setting out, um, uh, um, and and so 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 the conductor handles all that paperwork. He talks to he or she talks to the, the dispatcher. Um, sometimes you have to take. Uh, uh, Bulletins uh, uh, over the air, uh, write write them down. Although I think now, nowadays they they're doing doing it with computer and stuff like that. But um, uh, so so it's all the auxiliary work, and and so that conductor on the passenger train, um, he's also he or she is also responsible for all of that. The uh, the the track bulletins, uh, uh, the speed restrictions. Um, it's it's much more difficult because that person is also like collecting tickets and trying to maintain order, um, but 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 you might occasionally hear, uh, um, you know, the conductor and engineer conversing about uh, um, a certain restriction, and 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 if the engineer blows by it, uh, violates you know go uh, violates a speed or a, a work order restriction. That conductor will go down with him, uh, with, with now, him or her. Now, in, in the in the freight world, uh, do does the conductor ride up in the engine with the uh, with the engineer? Yeah, these days, uh, back when I started, when we actually had cabooses, uh, uh, the conductor would ride in the caboose, and then they would communicate via radio. Um, uh, and 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 again, you know. He, uh, the conductor might be, you know, a hundred cars away, but but the conductor knew, uh, supposed to know where uh, where the train is at, and 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 communicate. Hey, uh, uh, reminder, you got the speed restriction coming up in two miles. 
uh, you got this work order coming up, uh, have you, you know, uh, and, and so, uh, 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 and then back when the conductor was in the caboose, we had a head, head brakeman who would, who could do that radio talking. So, uh, the engineer ideally in the ideal scenario is the engineer is focused on actual, the mechanics of operating the train and the other person back in the day, it was the head brakeman. And, and nowadays, you know, it, it's only an engineer and conductor and the conductor's no caboose. And, and the conductor rides up in the head end. Uh, but, but there's always somebody doing all that extra auxiliary work that um, uh, uh, will be, I mean, it gives new meaning to task overload if, if that becomes the work of, of the engineer uh, how long by his a, or herself. How long, like, uh, how long does a, uh, an engineer work on, on a train in a conductor or a team? Are they, are they, are they going, um, you know, are they on that train for only four hours one way and then four hours back? Or are they, are they going out for days at a time, uh, like a long haul truck driver and then, and then coming, you know, staying the night somewhere and then coming back or how does, how there, does that work? There's a, there's a combination of, it, it, it's kind of like an, an, an element of, uh, of, of uh, elements uh, and or combinations of all of the above. Um, uh, uh, first of all, we, the law, we can only work, uh, actually turn, operate the train for 12 hours. Now, uh, so sometimes you'll, if you can make your destination from point A to point B and, and you make it in your 12 hours or you make it in 10 hours um, and then you get relieved by another crew, uh, with the onset of precision scheduled railroading, uh, what they 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 go like like here, just go as far as you can for twelve hours, and then we'll put another crew on, and they'll so so it used to operate like on different divisions, you know, uh, certain zones. Uh, point A to point B was division A, and point B to point C was division B, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, but 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 it's not unusual to to just say go as far as you can go and then we'll we'll put another crew. You may you may stop running for 12 hours and you may be waiting for four hours for, for another crew to relieve you, but 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 you're stuck there. Now sometimes they actually do try to exchange crews on the fly where um, where if there's a convenient meeting place, the inbound crew and the outbound crew will will stop and 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 both crews get to actually go home and sleep in their own bed that night. And then the flip side of that, uh, there's getting to be more and more of, of what we call triangles, where before you would just go from point A to point B, get your rest, and then come back and go point B back to A, your home terminal. But now it it now it's getting to be like over the road trucking in many scenarios where where it's called the triangle where you go from A to B lay over then you go from B to C and lay over uh, and you know maybe you make it you know maybe you make it from C to A or go back C to B or B to A uh, but but um, so nowadays oh, in, in in more and more scenarios. Uh, road crews can end up in, instead of you know being stuck overnight or for one day can end up being away from home for several days so the, the, this is happening more and more you got to pack an extra uh, you got to pack an extra big grip now what are the accommodations like as a railroad uh, employee? I mean, uh, you know, when you're an engineer, do you like leave, live and go in a bunkhouse or in a hotel or what? <laughs> it's funny you should ask that. Uh, 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 nowadays, uh, uh, nowadays, it's usually a, a respectable hotel. Uh, sometimes some are more respectable than others, but uh, 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 but when I, when I first started out and I, I worked the road a few times and, and, uh, went to Clinton, Iowa and they had barracks, literally barracks on the property. Um, uh, uh, and just basically separated by maybe a sheet of drywall 
Um, so, I, I mean, you, you could hear, not only could you hear people in whatever a, adjacent um, unit next to you, but, but they're flat switching. The, the, the uh, cars are banging into each other 24 seven. Uh, uh, if you've ever spent any time near a railroad yard where, where flat switching is going on, uh, 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 the constant, you know, metal, metal, tons and tons of metal against each other. Uh, uh, needless to say, uh, you weren't going to get much rest there. And, and the only time you would get a whole, get to go to a hotel was if the barracks were full. Uh, 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 those days have fortunately passed, but, but uh, uh, because I started out when I did, I got to experience that. And, and even then, you, uh, even when you did get a hotel, you'd have to room with, with, with another coworker. And nowadays you get your own room. So, so the accommodations are much more civilized today than what they once were. Um, how can you run a train with one person with all the stuff you're saying that's going on? Can you? <laughs> well, that, that's the question of questions. Uh, 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 I mean, yeah. Uh, 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 right now, there. Right now, there's the the rule is in place that um, that the engineer is not supposed to take any written instructions or do anything uh, while he or she is operating the train. Um, so they would either have to change that rule or. Uh, or, or, or if the engineer had to uh, uh, do some paperwork or take down a bulletin or, 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 or program something into the uh, computer tablet, um, they might, if, to comply with the rule as it currently is, the train would have to be stopped. Um, so, uh, 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 so in, in, you know, so in, in, in addition, there, there's, there's so many other reasons why why uh, we fear this scenario, but it'll if if they succeed in this, and that remains to be seen. Uh, uh, they they've been going after it now for ten years, on and off. Sometimes uh, you know, sometimes subtly and behind the scenes, and sometimes more overtly. But uh, um, uh, um, and to our credit, we've managed to hold the line for now. But but if they were to succeed. If they were, to, were if they were, to, were able to get it, um, then uh, 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 it, it would be uh, it would be interesting to see what they do with these rules and, and operating uh, 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 if, if they would have to change that. All right, I, I guess Charlie's got his hand raised, and then Margaret. So go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, Mark. It's not a pleasant topic, but. I got an email the other day, somebody was complaining that some union members, and we don't know in what numbers or to what extent, but they like this Trumpism and vote Republican. Do you have any views regarding that or have you encountered that among your personnel and of your union, the rail, obviously not the Railway Workers United, but, uh, in the industry, I yeah, I mean, I've I've encountered it, and and it, I think it's it's a uh, uh, in in fact, I mean, I was kind of horrified. One one of these guys that that uh, um, uh, he's actually a local chairman, um, and in in many ways, sometimes he's a very good fighter. Um, uh, he's, he's one of these guys that, that has always been kind of an effective shop floor fighter. Okay. And that's good. We, we need that. Uh, but, but unions also need to be more than if you're, you're forever going to be battling these shop floor skirmishes. If you don't take it to a higher level and, and, and dig deeper into the political and economic context of, of why these attacks are happening. And, um, but 
but but I always gave him credit as as a good fighter, and 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 he would he would be very good at the union meetings and and educating people about their rights and 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 you know he, he knew the contract like you know he he could recite the contract uh, you know blindfolded uh, in his sleep and all that stuff. On a certain level, I wasn't surprised when it when he when it when it when uh, when when it turned out that he was a Trump acolyte. Um, um, I mean, on a certain like what I you know on, on a certain level, I I respected him, but he's I you know I also had many differences with him. Uh, he he would always challenge you know when I would try to push things in a more progressive um, uh, way. Uh, he, he, you know, he, he was on the side of those that would, that would challenge and, and try to, you know, uh, you know, we're just about shop floor issues. We're not about politics, blah, blah, blah. You know, politics affect everything that happens. But um, so, yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's, um, uh, 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 so I've experienced it and, and I've, 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 I've read some of these other interviews with, with, uh, you know, and and it's funny, be, not funny, but but many of these same workers, and and this has been borne out by, you know, all these pollsters. Uh, 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 um, uh, um, but but it it's been well documented that 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 a very significant layer of these white blue collar workers who voted for Trump also voted for Obama the two times before. So, so it's oversimplifying it to just write them off as racist. Um, uh, um, and, 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 and in my opinion, I, I, I just, just my own personal opinion, but, but I think it's a, uh, uh, it, it's a reflection of how the two party system has maintained for so long. Uh, um, uh, you get sick of, uh, you, you know, you get sick of the Republicans, and so you vote for the Democrat. You get sick of the Democrat, you vote for the Republicans. And, and, and many people, uh, 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 I knew many people who just not could, who could not stomach voting for Hillary Clinton uh, for, you know, combination of reasons. Uh, there's no point in getting into that now, but, but, uh, um, uh, um, uh, whereas they may have voted for somebody like Sanders, uh, 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 and 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 so Trump was the rebel to the establishment. There, and, and, and he passed himself off as, and, and many workers bought into that. And so it's, um, yeah, it, it's a real unfortunate phenomenon, and and um, uh, you you could really go down a rabbit hole trying to psychoanalyze it, but. Uh, uh, I, I think an, it may be oversimp an oversimplification, but I think it does have something to do with, with the dissatisfaction uh, of, of the two-party system. And um, uh, like I said, many of those workers could have voted for Sanders, and many of those workers might eventually get involved in an independent political party. But right now, that's where we're at. Okay, Margaret, go ahead. Margaret, you had your hand raised. Go ahead. Unmute. Okay, Mark. This is slightly off topic, but you're one of the, probably the only person I've ever known who worked in a meatpacking plant, even for a short period of time. You know, most of those, our meatpacking plants in the South are staffed by without papers. You know, nobody wants to work in them. Uh, I'm a vegetarian, so it doesn't affect me. But today, is it safe? Is this meat really safe to eat? I think of people who eat liver, which is the filtering agent for the body. And this is quite different from growing up on a farm in the 20s and 30s when a person slaughtered a cow or slaughtered a hog. They knew all about the animal and had been grazing there. But is this stuff coming out of these meat packing plants safe for the general population to be eating. You know, you've seen it firsthand. And here in Texas, we've had outbreaks of COVID among the workers many times because they work in horrible conditions. So what is your opinion? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, my, my informed opinion uh, has to be qualified that, that it was uh, 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 
probably 1986 when, when I actually had my experience in the industry. And, um, but I, I will tell you what, though, uh, it was a long time before, and I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a vegetarian, but, but I'm also, uh, uh, you know, not a, not a super red meat consumer. I, I try to limit my red meat. I, I try to be reasonably healthy and all that stuff. I, I mean, I, I like a slab of ribs uh, here and there, uh, uh, you know, but uh, uh, try to keep it to a minimum. You know, that's kind of a sinful treat. But, uh, but I'll tell you what, when I, when I saw, and, and, and there were inspectors occasionally, you know, they'd be, you know, oh, oh inspectors here today. And, and, and uh, 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 I saw some really bad stuff to the point that I, you know, like for instance, diseased animals that were supposed to be put off to the side, yeah. you know? They, they, if, if they could get them on, if they could, if, if they could get them up the chute and on the hook, uh, they, they'd run them. Yeah. And, uh, because you didn't want to be the one you, you, you didn't want to be the one to, uh, you know, say, say Hey, th this can't go. Uh, um, uh, uh, e even though you're well within your right. And even though that's your job, uh, and even though you may be in a union, uh, sure. uh, you, you know, you, the, the, the you're, that that's going to be a, a lose lose proposition uh, and people, um, you know among poor people who eat a lot of chicken their little kids mature much earlier than they should be maturing because those chickens unless they're organic are pumped full of uh, hormones to make them fat and yeah. Martin, i mean it's just a horrible thing and, and so many times the diets of our poorer people are based on cheap they don't use hormones Okay, I have questions. Okay, okay, Lana, go ahead. Thank you. So, Maeska, what kind of job did you do in railroad for these five years? You said you was working. What kind of job, like driver, engineer? You know, yeah. my pop, my pop. You know, I come from Europe, so my pop uh, uh, was working in railroad architecture and construction more than thirty-eight years before we. We came to this country like a Jewish immigrants. So I'm very familiar when I saw the railroad. Oh, I like it. So, but it's different here than in Europe, you know, the railroad. So this is my question. What did you do? What kind of job you do? You was conductor or driver? Engineer, or engineer. Okay, I'm listening. Thank you. Yeah, I, I uh, the, the bulk of my career, with the exception of my first year, uh, I, I was an engineer. And doing what, like engineer, with like driving, dri yeah, right, uh, locomotive engineer, driving, driving the train, either, either oh. in the yard or uh, or over the road. Okay, uh, one more question, if I may. Um, how I mean, what if train going from one destination to another, and then it stopped because it's not well enough? Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> how how did you? Where you where did you get the toil, the toil, 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 because you know what if oh, by the way, did you uh, did you work on car cargo, how to say cargo, uh, railroad or with with this, yeah, or with trains? This is my question. Oh, run, I, I didn't quite get it though. Run, run that by me one more time. My, my question is, first of all, did you work for cargos, <laughs> for cargos train or for train with passengers? Oh, 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 right, right, right. Yeah, I, I, I've always worked in freight. I, 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 I worked on passenger trains a couple of times, but uh, 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 90, 98% of my experience was, uh, was with freight. With what? With cargo, with with cargo. Ah, with cargo. And this kind of question, if you may, if you can answer, uh, about what if it's train going, 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 and then stop because it's no oil or how to say engine. I no wait wait. I speak another language. <laughs> I try to speak English. Um, what if train going, 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 and and. For my understanding, like 
uh, train also need oil, right, to go. So what if it's not oil enough? <laughs> so how you manage? So uh, you 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 order immediately, so they immediately help you, and it's like um, wait. I try to speak English. Uh, find this word. Ah, uh, helper like help train, like emergency train and ge generation, or it's like working on gen uh, an electricity or an oil. Please, can you tell me? Because it's a different culture. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. I try not to be difficult. So my my just question: What is train going, going, going? and stop for a second. And it's age engine not working for some reason. So what is it, what do you do? Like, like how you fixing, like it's oil or on electricity basis. So how, how, how you fixing and, and continue this train driving. <laughs> Thank you. I try not to be difficult. Uh, the, 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 the best uh, shot I can give at this is uh, 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 back, back in the old back uh -huh. in the old days where things were more mechanical if, if we had yeah. problems you, more we mechanical? Could, I guess it's now more mechanical no now everything's computer so so uh, mm. you know, used to be you if, if you you part of learning the trade was learning all the little tricks of how to how to fix mm. this and how to fix that um, mm. uh, uh, if, if, if it were something that didn't require complete disassembly in a, a massive but chest thing, but now but with this, everything computerized if, if something goes wrong uh -huh. uh, uh, if, if something goes wrong forget it uh, then then but you have help immediately those train help uh, have help immediately to come and fix it or or need to put on the side and 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 and, and order, offer passengers like shuttle train or something you know what i'm asking because i travel so much in russia very much you know around the russia uh and around the europe and we never, maybe we was lucky, and I don't know, but we never ever had trouble or problem with railroad. It was working so smooth, so nice. So that's what I kind of spoiled by railroad from Europe. But I guess I travel here by Amtrak and uh, I, I forgot, oh, Metro, Metro. Oh, excellent, I like it, I like very much. So I traveled here from Rogers Park area to the, oh, let's see, to Buffalo Grove and to Highland Park to visit. And then they picked me up uh, relatives or acquaintances and then we went to shopping, you know. And then they bring back to me to train station. It was pretty good, but um, it's so have different. A question. Yeah. yeah, so that's what my question was. I'm satisfied with your answer. Thank you so much. All right, Charlie, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, sir, uh, on Thursday at the other college, I spoke about how my union, we won an election, and we organized employees in six southern states, which was rather unusual. What explanation can you give? You're forming a nationwide political party, but there appears to be an awful lot of sentiment, sentiment out there against the organized labor movement, and particularly the South, and in states like Texas and Indiana, where Bob Matter comes from, um, except for the Northern portion, where the people have some degree of sanity, um, but, what exponent, how do we counter this, and in rural areas, this culture of anti-unionism, which seems to be so prevalent? I mean, it, and again, it's just my personal opinion, but, but, but uh, uh, this is, a, it, it is a real problem and, and and in my opinion, the only way, this is why it, it's, it's a life and death question for the unions to, to, uh, 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 to, 
to to take more progressive positions to 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 uh, uh, to actively engage in the movements for social justice. Um, uh, you know, that this gets back to the conflict that I would constantly have with with this one particular uh, local chairman. Uh, like I said, you know, good fighter on the shop floor, but he didn't want to have anything to do with what I was talking about. Um, and and uh, 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 and so that 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 uh, uh, how are how are you going to win allies? Uh, be, be, because ultimately labor, especially rail labor, will never be able to win a real pitched battle without the public support. Railroad Workers United understands that. And, 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 and as much as we try to educate and, and inspire our own peers and co-workers, we also reach out to the public because we know we know that we're going to need allies when, when, when the showdown comes over the single employee crew. Um, uh, 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 we, we know we're going to need allies. Um, and, and so uh, 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 I, I like to think of what we do in RWU as kind of a microcosm of what A, the rail union should be doing, but also what 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 unions what labor in general should be doing which is to which is to reach out to the layers of society who are dispossessed who who are frustrated whether it you know over all the injustices because that's where the fighters are and 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 and, and our our fights in labor for dignity is part of the fight for social justice and and the challenge is for, 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 for rank and file labor to realize that and, and to actively seek out and make those alliances. And, and until that happens, uh, 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 until, uh, until that happens on a bigger scale, uh, we're gonna be vulnerable to that. Uh, uh, um, labor ultimately has to be part of the leadership for social justice and, and, and without that, um, uh, we, 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 with, without grabbing that bull by the horns, then we're vulnerable to this kind of anti-labor sentiment, in my opinion. I have a question. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, so did you say, are you part of the Teamsters or are you part of a broader coalition? You know, um, wouldn't th that be a way to, and I, I guess I'm interested in kind of like what Charlie was getting at, you know, uh, why I think there's, well, I know there's a kind of neoliberal lobby with a lot of uh, ability to influence public opinion <laughs> against labor and the left. And um, I, don't, I don't know, is it, I'm always trying to think of a way you know, we can stop that lobbying. Um, actually, there was a law in 1913 uh, that government is not allowed to do lobbying or public relations. But um, because they do, you know, they've got Citizens United is given Koch brothers and uh, there's just, you know, this whole neoliberal war against it. And uh, so I don't know. Do you do y'all do um, lobbying, public relations, uh, you know, coalition building? <laughs> um, uh, uh, just to answer your first question, we're really not. We're, so we're not affiliated with the Teamsters. We're 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 we're, we're really we're not a union. We're we're a. Uh, uh, an activist caucus of workers within the 13 different rail unions uh, trying to a push that you know that if we can't be all one union which is we're, we're, we're trying to uh, pick up where Eugene Debs left off with the American Railway Union and, and organizing rail workers into into one union but but until that can happen which you know, I mean there's so many bureaucracies and, and uh, uh, jurisdictional, you know, at least to act as one, uh, 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 
you know, and, and if we act as one, the, you know, the, the, you know, the actual form it takes is not as important, you know, whether it's 13 unions or one union, if we can act as one. Uh, and, and, and so we try to, uh, uh, we have people in, in our different unions, in the conductors union, in the engineers union, in the maintenance of way union, in the different crafts unions, all kind of trying to push this same agenda from within uh, um, uh, to the rank and file, to the low and mid-level leaderships. And, and we, even, we even push our agenda to the international presidents. And, and we, uh, we, we feel that we're a force to be reckoned with. We, 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 we have a tremendous hearing. We have tremendous respect. Um, uh, uh, at one time, like, I mean, we, 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 we have, like, I can't remember. I, I don't, I'm not that active on our Facebook page, but uh, I've heard that uh, from other people who are that, that there have been thousands and thousands. Um, we have a following. We, people listen to us. Um, we don't have any real power, uh, so to speak, except for our moral authority and, and, and the leadership that we try to assert. As far as the, the whole uh, uh, lobbying, I mean, we, we don't really, we don't really in, actively engage in lobbying, but when something is really big, if there's something really big, we'll, we'll encourage, you know, here, write your congressman type thing, but, but uh, uh, we just try to speak. But, we we just try to speak the truth to our to our our memberships and allies. And why and, not um, be part of a Teamsters or an AFL CIO? Any of those broader labor union is that not considered? Or um, I mean, at, at at this point in time, uh, with with. Uh, 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 I mean, what Debs tried to do with the American Railway Union was to recruit the workers from all the different railway railroad unions. And at its peak, the, the American Railway Union actually had more than half of the rail workers uh, in the American Railway Union uh, in his quest to organize all the rail workers into one union. 100 plus years later, all these unions have protective jurisdictional verbiage. Um, uh, to try to do something like that at this point in time with our meager resources is just not realistic. Um, uh, 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 trust me, I, I would love to do another, I would love to do the American Railway Union part two. I, and and uh, that, that's my own personal opinion, and I know that's shared. But 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 with the lay of the land, what it is today, it's just not realistic. And 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 so with our meager resources, we we we, we just try to uh, uh, get our truth out, tell the truth to our coworkers, tell the truth to the public, and 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 try to do the best we can, uh, 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 and just. Um, resist uh, the rail carriers and the government that enables them every which way we can. As I said to the team the other on Thursday, I, I recommend people watch Walter Ruther uh, documentary showing how brutal the thugs were that go after um, the unions and the Debs documentary, you know, uh, I growing up in the South, I'm kind of like Margaret that I, you know, I tended to just, we we're kind of brainwashed into thinking that it's, you know, all communism, <laughs> workers, labor, it's, it's terrible. And maybe they ought to push, you know, like the way curriculums are, you know, um, not like history doesn't honestly give a and um, under, you know, a real story about the unions and uh, the way management and I, I noticed Bob posted the National Review articles. They've got four articles just smearing, you know, unions and Democrats and socialists. And <laughs> I think we have to stop that 
national review from doing that, especially given that they were started by the CIA with James Burnham and the funding that came from the CIA. So just, I think you, we got to sue them, you know, go after all these violations of communications law. Just, just, real, just, mm -hmm. just real briefly, I mean, I, mean, I uh, uh, um, uh, A, I, I don't think we'll, uh, rather than shut down the review, it, uh, the, the way I see it is to challenge and counter, like, so sometimes we'll get these pro company articles uh, in railway age that, uh, siren going by, uh, that will promote the, that, that advocate for engineer only single employee crew. And we'll take that and we'll rebut it, you know, here, this is what, uh, and, uh, but the other point I just want to make, you know, with the whole anti-union uh, thing, um, a lot of things come out in the wash when people struggle. Uh, um, a lot of biases, a lot of prejudices, a lot of misconceptions. Uh, when people get out on the picket line and, and uh, 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 things become much clearer, and, and, and um, I, I am confident that in spite of these problems, which are real, that, that, that you and others have cited, uh, 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 I, I am confident that, 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 that as we struggle and as we resist, uh, um, if, we, if we can main, if, if combine that with civilized engagement and debate and discussion, uh, um, that that we can overcome that that we can overcome these differences uh, because many of them are just so surface level and shallow and and based on the the, the foundation is no more solid than a house of cards and 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 when you know we can take that on and and we just have to keep any chance we get. Yeah, you know one idea. I learned a lot running for office about organizing and it, you know, community organizing and campaign organizing are kind of the same thing. So I think you should run. Why not? You know, um, just whoever will get you on the ballot. <laughs> I, I think, why not? Have you ever considered that? Well, as, as, as long as you ask, uh, uh, actually I have, and, 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 and somewhere down the line, uh, 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 it, it's something I have contemplated. Uh, 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 I, I mean, I think the, 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 the signature requirements uh, are overwhelming uh, to just try to run as an independent, which is, which is something. Uh, but uh, uh, um, as long as you ask, I, I, uh, uh, before my time is up, I, I would like to take a run at, con at, at, at running for Congress at an independent. Um, uh, 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 I think it's like you'd, you'd almost need like 20,000 signatures on a petition. They, they make it very difficult for, for anybody independent of the, of the two parties to run. And that's, you know, but, um, but as long as you asked, it's, it, 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 it's on my, it's on my bucket right. list. Uh, so I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, Th thank I you for the encouragement. Just, yeah. Even just, um, you know, because you like, I almost could have been on the Green Party ticket because we they made the case that there was a kind of not a level playing field with the pandemic and all this. And so it, at least you kind of start going, look how uneven it is the way the incumbent, you know, has all the phone numbers and all the money and all this. And where, how does a, a new person get in? So I was, I'm kind of an independent too, but I was willing to be on any party. Um, you know, uh, this people's one sounds very interesting because I know Chris Hedges was, I was almost on the Green Party. He was supposed to be on the Green Party ticket for Congress one day and the next day he said he's not. And, and I looked at it and he said, because they told him he'd have to give up his TV, you know, his internet news show. And I, I wanted, I don't, I don't have his phone number, but I wanted to call him and say, you don't have to give up your news show. You know, Donald Trump is on Fox News every day. If, if he does, if they do want that, 
we need to sue them. You know, look at this uneven playing field that, uh, and that's what we, this thing needs to be regulated, these elections, not just like the one with the most money has their own platform, their own party, no platform. It's just the Trump <laughs> or the Clinton party. You know, it is so corrupt. We need to gather unionize and sue, you know, I mean, get, they need to, reg, you know, they need to regulate elections. You know, that's what the Federal Election Commission's all about, you know, I mean, but they, it's like at this point, it seems like all the politicians just go, it's crazy, you know, Trump does whatever he wants, <laughs> the Dems, and, and the rest of us are just losing our public estate. And so, um, but I think you've got a big coalition being in the union and I could, I'm Ellen Corley, look at me, I could help you get the mail-in list and stuff like that. And, you know, you could get signatures if you, it is unfair the way it is, but um, I, I, we all need to run. That's the only way to exactly. take on these tyrants. And, <laughs> and, and it's gonna take, it, it, with this issue and with so many others, it's going to take a mass movement uh, yeah. and, 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 and we're going to have to organize that and, and, and work amongst ourselves and collaborate, find our common ground, work mm -hmm. together, find the yeah. common ground and, and, and where we don't have common ground, agree to disagree and we'll deal with that later and, and yeah. find the common ground that we can fight together on. And there's a lot of it. And, and, but mm -hmm. but it, it, it's going to take mass the mass involvement of people for all these issues that that we're facing, and and right. including in, in including uh, 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 running for office and, and and getting people like us. Why why shouldn't people like why should you or or myself uh, uh, get you yeah. know? And, and so uh, um, I'll, everybody I'll, should I'll, run. I'll, I'll debate I'll debate most of them in a in a heartbeat, you know. That'd be the whole reason to do it, just to get them on the debate stage. And, right, right, right. You know, right. and hear the people clapping for a real person, an outsider, right. you know, a real a real person, <laughs> the person's party. And and and, <laughs> and, and 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 come at them with facts and real life experiences rather than oh. You know, I mean, so it's, okay, okay, let's move feudalist. on. They're feudalists, you know, they're it's feudalism, right. they're, they're monarchs. Mm -hmm. And okay, we got some more people with questions, uh, Ellen. I know, uh, Jan Lee, you want to go next and then we'll go with Charlie. Jan, Jan you want to go next? Yeah. Okay, so, um, I think my initial question was partly answered about um, the Labor Day, not um, on May 1st, but September. Um, I'm still not really, really clear um, why uh, it is uh, in September and if there's any uh, movement, any um, plans to um, move this Labor Day to May 1st. So it is more in align with the original uh, intent and the international May. Uh, Labor Day. Labor Day. That's my first question. And my second question is about union. Um, is uh, is there a kind of uh, federal union? Is union stronger or weaker now than say 10, 20 years ago? Are there plans? Are there strategies to uh, make union stronger? And how? Uh, we can help to make unions stronger. Uh, the, the first question, um, unfortunately, there is no real, uh, uh, any real organized attempt uh, at this point in time to, to uh, uh, champion, you know, Labor Day reverting back, back to May Day in, in line with the uh, working class around the world and, and to celebrate the struggle of, of, uh, of uh, workers right here in Chicago uh, for the eight hour day. Um, but, but, uh, um, uh, uh, but, but that's why it's so noteworthy and significant um, to whatever extent May Day protests, demonstrations, rallies do happen. Uh, uh, it, it keeps that alive and, and um, uh, but, but there's no real 
you know, un unfortunately, there, there's there, there's no real significant motion at this point in time. Um, uh, but um, uh, um, to to the next question, uh, before I get to the next question, and I'm just kind of this kind of dovetails into into what was mentioned previously. It kind of jives. Um, but uh, 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 um, uh, the educate we're not taught our history. Uh, um, we're, 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 we're not taught this history. And, 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 and the only reason, whatever I have learned, I've, I've learned and or experienced on my own. I've, I've sought it out. Um, and, and, uh, 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 and, and, and so we're, we're not, the, 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 whole, the whole Labor Day thing was, was, was the working class was, was up in arms about the, the, the working class was very much in solidarity with, with, with the Pullman strike, with Debs and, and the American Railway Union. And, 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 and it, it was not pretty how it was ended. And, and so it, it was kind of a bone by, by President Cleveland and the head of the union of the AFL at the time to try to placate the workers because they were very resentful of, 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 of how the whole Pullman strike went down, uh, the violence initiated by the government. Um, and, and, and so it, it was literally to, to like placate, to, to give them, throw them a bone. And, and um, um, but to, 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 your, to your other question about the strength of unions, I mean, on a certain level, Numerically, you, you know, numerically, the number of organized workers in unions is has declined. Um, you know, we're we're in single digits. Where it was in like you know the in the sixties, it was something like thirty plus percent, and and now we're in single digits. Um, but but I, I I don't look at that statistic because at a certain point. Workers, whether whether they're in unions or not, I mean, look look at Amazon. Look at look at the Amazon workers. They're not they're not in unions right now, so they don't count as part of, you know. So you can say, oh, uh, organized labor. There's only nine percent, eight eight or eight percent of the workforce, whatever statistic it is that that's in organized in organized unions, and you can say, oh, that's pathetic, but yet. What if all these, you know, what, what if all these non-organized, non-unionized workers were to not show up at Amazon? Power is power. Everybody who works as part, and as part of the productive process has tremendous economic and political power. Being part of an organized union makes it easier to exercise that but but it, it's not a requirement, and and so uh, 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 and, and and so so uh, 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 those Amazon workers could be among the most powerful workers in the country today. You know, if 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 if, if they recognized and exercised that power, even without being in a union. So so how do how do our union? How do we get stronger? Uh, um, through struggle, through uh, 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 helping the struggles that are going on, the Nabisco workers on strike, uh, these coal miners in Alabama, uh, 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 helping them, building solidarity with them, uh, helping them. Uh, uh, if, 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 if one of these, you know, if the Nabisco workers can win, that lays the, that builds momentum and inspiration for the next workers. It, 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 it's 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 a how we rebuild the labor movement is, is it's going to be through struggle and, and, and ultimately solidarity within the working class that helps to gain some victories and, and start pushing back. And once we gain some momentum, who knows where it could go? That's just my opinion. I checked the People's Party website and it, look, it looks really good. I think if, uh, if the People's Party could be um, more well known and to kind of uh, attract um, people from our walk, walks to participate. 
it can be a um, political force to counter the two party system, but it's, uh, it doesn't seem to be well known. Like I didn't know until now. Um, I, I don't know if, uh, if there are like some strong leaders from that uh, People's Party could um, give more uh, voice, uh, get more interviews, uh, have some kind of agenda to uh, and lobby. Do they have a lobby in Washington, D.C.? Uh, if if, if uh, there are a lot of lo lobbyists, and if you really want to expand your power, you have to have some kind of lobby. Um, representations, otherwise no one knows about you. Just on that, my, my personal opinion is, uh, um, I mean, yeah, it, it's a new development. Uh, uh, they're struggling to, uh, um, trying to develop themselves and, and trying to get that recognition. Uh, there's talk, I, I, there, there was talk about having a, a, a demonstration uh, at the Capitol. Um, uh, I'm not sure where, where that's going to go, but um, uh, yes, it's, I mean, this is the challenge for, for a third party, for an independent political party to uh, uh, stay afloat long enough while you, because it, 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 it's a... Uh, it, it's person to person. It, it, it's a real, it takes a real dogged effort to, 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 to even just get out and get known. And the challenge is to just remain afloat long enough it, 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 while that window's open to see if that can happen. And so that's, that, that, that's, uh, that's the struggle they and, and any independent entity is going to face. And, and, uh, 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 we'll see where it goes. See, there is a Teamsters has a railroad safety. Uh, they've got a division of 70,000 railroad workers, but more for maintenance and stuff, right? Are, are you aware of that? Or Well, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and that's uh, just. The, the Teamsters actually, they're, they, they actually, both the Maintenance of Way Union and the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers are kind of part of the, the the Teamsters is kind of a mothership type conference, and so they're 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 part of that. Um, and uh, uh, but you're and not. What? Why are? Why isn't your group part of that? Um, well, we're not I, a union. I, I mean, we're we're yeah. we're not a union. We're 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 an, we're an activist. We're 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 an activist caucus trying to challenge all the established unions to fight more effectively for our safety and dignity. Yeah. How if many we, people are in your association? Um, it, it comes and goes and fluctuates. Uh, 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 I'd say active dues paying members, we, we have a few hundred. Right. And so we've had, wouldn't we, we, have thousands, we have thousands of followers we have we have thousands of followers who, who read our newspaper and and follow us online um, but as far as actual dues paying members I'd, I'd say it's a few hundred right it it seems like being so divided that that's how the managers <laughs> i was recommending the manager's revolution or the in um was james burnham who was national reviews original guy in the 30s but that the idea of the manager's revolution is really why everybody's got to be a union and unite. <laughs> Even those of us who aren't in unions, we got to somehow consider ourselves one big union against the managers because the managers are against the unions, <laughs> but they're invisible kind of, and they've got us atomized and separated and without any I don't know. It'd probably be hard to get everybody to stay home someday, you know, or I'm like, what, think about this. I, did you hear in Chicago, you know, the, the guys that drive the buses are so, because they don't want to wear masks, they are suddenly out of a job and um, each family gets a thousand dollars to take a Uber. They don't mention that it's 
I've heard that Rahm Emanuel has a big stake in Uber, you know? And so it's like, look at how, you know, the, there's no solidarity um, in terms of union, like, you know, um, uh, around all, everybody together against this, you know, um, the managers, this kind of invisible cabal that is um, really designed to kill all of us, you know, and our, any revolutions we might want to struggle for. I, I just don't see the numbers. I'm a market research analyst. And it's okay. like, how do you aggregate that numbers? I, I think there's got to be, uh, maybe join a union, <laughs> join the Teamsters. Um, no, I don't, just a thought, you know. Mark, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious if you have uh, anything good to say about corporations or uh, our capitalistic system. Well, I would say that at one point, um, uh, uh, long time ago, uh, 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 what you refer to as the capitalist system um, um, helped to develop our productive forces. Uh, um, uh, and, and, and there are certainly, you know, there, there's going to be certainly some people critical of, of, of that viewpoint. Um, but, uh, um, you know, the industrial revolution do doesn't happen, uh, you know, w w without capitalism. Uh, um, my, my opinion is that, is that Whatever, uh, whatever they contributed at one point to the development um, uh, has run its course, and 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 you look at what we're facing today. I, I, I mean, uh, the destruction of the environment, uh, um, uh, the, the the wealth inequality, the the. Uh, um, the, the never ending wars, which are uh, uh, competition for resources, uh, uh, competition against different countries. Uh, 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 so, so in my opinion, what, whatever positive, what, whatever positive things uh, capitalism may have brought at one point in time, uh, I believe, I believe that's run its course. Um, um, and, you know, just uh, with the way the state of the world and, and what's happening today, that's just my own personal opinion. Mark? All right, go ahead, go ahead, Chuck. All right, uh, the first full expression of free market capitalism in the United States was the transportation, the railroad industry, the railroads. A lot of people don't realize that at one time in the beginning, the only stocks that were traded on Wall Street were railroad stocks. Also, I think a strong argument could be made that the very worst employers have always been the railroads. Uh, isn't the real problem free market capitalism? I mean, um, again, if, if you, my personal opinion, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, 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 I wouldn't object to that assessment. That, you know that you know my my personal opinion. Uh, um, uh, I, I I I would I, I would agree with you on that. I mean, there appears to be inherent flaws to free market capitalism if, in, if its purest expression has done nothing good for the people. Well, then we got to get rid of it. Well. Karomenka. Uh, 
Well, um, can I jump in? Послушай, ну, ну, не на, не надо на меня наезжать, потому что ты же знаешь, что я забыла. No perfect system. У меня телефон. У меня, нет, мне это все понятно. Телефон у меня кривой, понимаешь? Um, Значит, быстро я скажу, что я хотела, я понимаю, systems, whether it's capitalism or socialism, it's just a lay. Elena needs to mute. Yeah, mute Elena. Elena. Oh, yeah. Um, so I come back to say, um, when we just talk about isms, it's just not, um, it cannot cover the real picture. Um, there are many forms of capitalism. There are more forms of socialism um, and there's no perfect system, right? Because our human beings are flawed because we're flawed. We cannot really like expect a perfect system. So we can only talk about what works and what not working. What works in capitalism, what's not working in capitalism. What's working in socialism, what's not working in socialism. And how we can uh, adjust and find um, the best in capitalism and best in socialism and for them to get kind of like for them, it, it's not like, like we don't have a pure capitalism. Um, China doesn't have a pure socialism or communism. That, that's just not, not such a thing. There is a pure system. Um, so being more analytical, we just have to find out what elements that worked or that still working, that elements that are uh, out of date. Uh, maybe someday someone can make a, 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 a presentation about elements that in um, capitalism worked before, but not working now and what needs to be adjusted. Uh, socialism in Europe is different from socialism in China. Some people think China is communism, but actually it's socialism, but it has a one-party system. Uh, capitalism in the United States is different from Canada. Canada is Canada socialism or capitalism, maybe like half and half, right? So we just have to kind of like find out what things that still work and what things that don't work and how we can um, make adjustment to, to make it work. That's kind of general, but I don't like, I don't uh, have something too specific and controversial to say, but I'm just thinking that we need to move beyond the label and to be specific about things that are working and things that are not working. And there's no perfect system. Um, the system here is not perfect. There's, um, I think Canada, Northern Europe probably have better system and we, what we can learn from them. In 1797, Eli Whitney set up the first assembly line. Are you telling me that's a system you think that works? I don't know. I, I don't know about that assembly line? incident, but I'm thinking in general, there are things that worked before, but that don't work now. Um, there, there are things, probably there are things working well now, but um, are some things that need to be adjusted. I just don't think there is like a, a perfect system that we have to argue about. I think you got about the worst system you could design. You go ahead and ask somebody on an assembly line, hey, you like this? 
I, I'd like to respond real quickly. Um, Go right ahead. Um, I actually agree with a lot of what you said. And the most important that, that I strong, feel very strongly about is I try to stay away from labels, okay? Yeah. Uh, because one person, uh, one person's S word means this, and to another person it means that, and 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 so so so, forget about the labels. It, it be, because it, it's not a common language for one, okay? And and it 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 can be counterproductive. What I prefer is to discuss the content, just the content of what we're up against. Does it have to be this way? Could there be a better way? Uh, um, and 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 it's it's just about justice. What, what, what's what's just? What's right? What's fair? Uh, so forget the isms. Uh, 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 what I do like to focus on is the question of democracy. Okay, uh, uh, is this really a democracy that? You know, okay, you, you can go every November and, and vote for for Clinton or Trump, but but is it really a de a democracy? Uh, um, and 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 and, that, and that's why I have always felt strongly about an independent political party that can galvanize the vast majority of us. And and uh, uh, as far as you know, the humans are flawed. We're not perfect. Okay. Fair enough, but 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 if the question is fundamentally, if the fundamental question posed is, should society and the wealth that we create, sh should we, the vast majority of us, benefit from that wealth that we create, or should it, or or should it go into the pockets and bank accounts? Of, of a tiny, of more, what's getting to be more and more a tiny handful. I mean, the, st the statistics become more and more obscene of, of, you know, X amount, you know, these five people own half of the world's wealth. It, it, it's just obscene. And, and, and so, so, so instead of the isms, uh, I just prefer to pose the question should society be run in a more just, in a more humane manner? And the vast majority of people, if, if you pose that question, would say, well, yeah, of course. Okay, well, how do we make that happen? You know, then it gets to be a bit more, you know, then it gets to be a bit more complicated. But, but as far as, you know, humans being flawed, I really believe that if, if we really had democratic institutions, where, 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 where we were able to, uh, you know, do we feel that every human being is entitled to the best possible health care, irregardless of their wealth? Do we feel that every human being is entitled to the best possible education and opportunities? Um, I believe that most people are, are fair and righteous minded and, and that, um, and that if that collectively we could debate and discuss and find righteous solutions to our problems. And, and if we make a mistake here and there, okay, we might make a mistake, but eventually we'll catch it and correct it. Um, it may sound oversimplified and, and idealistic, but, but uh, uh, um, I just go back to Debs. I, I, De Debs just articulated the vision for a just, humane world, uh, and and um, uh, uh, I've just always been convinced of that, and I believe that 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 humanity is capable of that. Uh, it's just going to be a struggle to get there. I agree with you in the big picture, but the the um, the devil is in the details, as they say. Uh, even the concept of democracy and justice um, may be interpreted a little bit differently. 
uh, I think it's a Far Farid Zakaria who wrote a book, uh, Illiberal Democracy at Home and Abroad. Um, so there is a liberal democracy and there's illiberal democracy. And to what extent that we run into illiberal uh, democracy and what, to what extent democracy can be hijacked um, and voters don't really like being misled to vote against their own interest. These are all possibilities. So it's the, the, the details about what is the real uh, democracy. If you want to talk about like more uh, unambiguous um, statements or uh, struggles, it will be, it would have to be more detailed, more precise. For example, minimum wage, $15. Um, I'm for it. Uh, I think people who work should be able to live like a minimally decent life, like $15 or even $20 for that matter. Um, so if, if we go to that much detail, there's not too much like misreading out. There could be anything can be misread. But the concept of democracy and justice as to some extent, it's a loaded word, but details like minimum wage, then we say, are you for $15 minimum wage? Um, and why, why are you for, why are you against? That has less ambiguity. We say we got a rebuttal, Timmy. I think it's a good idea we go to rebuttals now. I've been working on a good one myself with all these uh, lefties in the audience speaker. today. All right, let's thank our speaker. Mark, you did a nice job tonight. I appreciate all the history of the railroads and the history of the unions and uh, everything else. And uh, I think you guys are absolutely preposterous that capitalism's not delivering the goods. As a matter of fact, it just confirms my own views that Marxism and the communist ideology is starting to fuel the left. And Ellen, you're going to love this rebuttal, but I'm not going to go quite yet. So now if we have a rebuttal, we are going to give everybody about five, about uh, four or five minutes, depending on who wants to go first. Ellen, would you like to go first on a rebuttal? You usually have a lot to say. Uh, John or Mike, Vicky, you'll get the last word, Mark. I'll go. Yeah, I was. All right, Ellen, go ahead. You got your uh, four to five minutes, so go ahead. All right. Um, well, I am glad to see a, a socialist or, you know, a social contract mentioned today. Thank you um, for your talk. I do. I spend a lot of time thinking about how how to bring back the social contract. Regarding Gian's question, um, you know, 40 years ago, we were more of a balanced, kind of like Canada system. We were regulated. The neoliberals in, starting in the 30s, and, but really before that, but they, um, you know, the Republican Party, the right wing extremists came up with an idea of monetarism and, um, you know, Milton Friedman, Ayn Rand, objectivism, Alan Greenspan, and they, they pushed capitalism, uh, you know, give all the power to capitalism and the capital come trickling down, follow man's mind. And really what's needed, I learned in business school, I was kind of brainwashed in that. But in business school, I learned, you know, you really want all four stakeholders, you know, the managers, the owners, the consumers, and the um, managers. Owners. <laughs> I'm like that guy in Dallas. What is the fourth one? But, um, you know, to really have all stakeholders influencing the process. And that is really any corporation 
you know, you got your micro, you want it to work like a family, you want it to be functional, you want it to be fair. There every all the research supports the idea that, you know, a um, happy family with benefits and social ideals and progressive ideals works and management, you know, that listens to those, listens to the consumer, listens to the employees, listens to the managers, listens to the owners. Um, you know, that's the best way. It took me a while to see that the problem with just owners being the only stakeholder, you know, the stock market, the the CEOs, the Jeffrey Zuckerberg's, you know, um, they're not listening. They have this technocracy. This is not democracy. And it I used it used to be that consumerism and um, uh, democracy went together, you know, but now read. Um, I was looking at Michael Parenti's Democracy for the Few. He deals with all the different domains and justice and um, just every respect. If it's only the owners that have the control, the power, and they're not listening to what we want. What we've got is, you know, a, a world where, you know, they're going to take away abortion rights. They're going to take away school rights, uh, health care rights, you know. And I know my stepfather was like this. He really didn't believe in social justice or rights. I, he was like, what's, what's social justice? And he, his parents were... German Nazis, so they just didn't teach him about that. And I luckily was raised by in a Christian family in Georgia, longstanding Republicans, but they've been Democrats with Kennedy, but you know, just fair and reasonable people. And uh, you know, we're all fair and reasonable people, but I little do we know, we don't have any power. And that's my argument with Tim. I'd be like, you know, I mean, I, I we're powerless. That's my best hope. I, I was at AA meeting today and they start with, we are powerless. <laughs> we have to just kind of first look at that, you know, and rather than be angry, just kind of go, hmm, you know, ha be humble, you know, don't get angry because that kind of gets in the way. And, um, but uh, assertive and um, we got to stand up for our rights and, um, you know, I'm learning, learning to be a feminist. Uh, you know, we have to really wreck and acknowledge that there is a, um, there's really kind of a police state and there's no doubt about it, um, but it's invisible. And that's, that's what's scary. So I, pretty, I don't know if you I assume you're from China or um, somewhere like that, but uh, we need to actually, it'd be interesting to really, I, I studied Chinese um, at Colgate in 1973 with Chris Edges. I was there the same time. And um, we had to take a course in another culture and they were just becoming capitalist. And, um, you know, they've done so much a better job than we have. But yet because of the bad PR, it's like we're trying to wage a war on them. And just like we are Russia. Russia, we used to learn a lot from. And, it, you know, if you look at, you know, kind of the way the open-minded John Dewey's and Democrats of, you know, the Debs types in the 30s and 40s or whenever, you know, they were open-minded toward this rather than right now, all the money's going into the war machine. And that, that's something nice that Tracy and we're working on divesting from that, but they've got 35% of the budget for biological warfare, like this virus. Um, that's why I've spent a lot of time that this was made at Fort Detrick that because Fauci and Gates have the patents on it. They've had it since the 90s, you know, go right in there with the AIDS. They engineer these things. It's called bioengineering, bio warfare. You know, um, all the writers write about it, but it gets erased and censored because Zuckerberg and those guys have all the, all the power. As Hitler said, you know, once he had the media, big lies were easy. He, he won the whole game. It is, <laughs> that's where we're at now. That's all I got. Thank you. All right, Jean, your rebuttal. Yeah. You got your hand up and go uh, ahead. Okay, so um, you can hear me, right? Yes, so, we can hear you. I'm going to lower your hand and uh, okay. go ahead and give you a rebuttal. Okay. Um, first, I admire uh, our speaker, Mark. 
um, idealism. I think we need to have idealism and we need to have champions for workers um, and we need to have diversity of voices. So uh, different interests can be represented. And I do think workers, their voices cannot to be well represented because they don't have as much uh, money, capital, um, leadership, strong leadership to, um, to represent them. So I'm glad that people who um, still have very strong idealism and want to speak up for the uh, working people. Um, secondly, I think capitalis capitalism has its merit, uh, encourages um, creativity, competition, uh, but unchecked, um, unbridled capitalism um, can create a lot of um, uh, conflicts, inequality. Um, the, the money talks. If money is concentrated in the hands of small majority, small minority, um, it, the opinions we hear can be skewed towards the rich and the powerful. So in that sen sense, I can see both the merit and the danger of capital being concentrated <coughs> in a small minor minority, right? Um, I mean, um, in, a, in, in general, I think it is important to hear different opinions and uh, ideas so we are not close-minded and we can pick and choose what might be a better solution to the complex problems we have. Okay. All right, uh, Charlie, you wanna go next? All right, Charlie, you can go next. And then, uh, or to Bob, do you want to go before Charlie? All right, I'll go. All right, Charlie, I'll lower your hand and uh, Bob Matter will okay, go next. First of all, I'd like to thank our speaker for uh, being our special Labor Day speaker. Covered a lot of topics here and a very important topic, possibly the most important topic. I'll be eclectic as usual and I will cover six areas. Um, First of all, uh, to me, the purest expression of free market capitalism is the assembly line. One thing I want to tell you about the assembly line, employers don't like to have information available to the general workforce uh, regarding the line speed. They try to keep that information clandestine because they'll, they'll really manipulate it. Anyhow, I don't think any system that... Uh, incorporates uh, using employees as robot, robotic features is one that I can embrace. There's no way to make the, the, I don't care about Western electric and management studies. There's no way to make assembly line activities meaningful. Sure. There's been, there's, as I said, just, just forget about it. It isn't gonna work. They tried setting up work teams or what have you but it didn't prove to be successful. And there simply is no means of, of uh, improving on that. Um, okay, the next thing is, uh, Bob didn't quite understand what a condu conductor is actually the individual in charge of a train. And a train isn't like, like point A to point B, there's pickups and there's deliveries, there's routes and stops and starts. Uh, he has a crew, uh, cars have to be dispatched and picked up, uh, and the conductor is an individual who's in fact in charge of the train. Uh, you may not realize it, uh, you may think the guy, your commuter trains collecting tickets, but he actually is the one who gives instructions to the guy running the engine, among the other personnel, maybe uh, on that vehicle. Um, the thing about the 19, the thing about communists and unions and May Day is that a lot of people don't realize in the 1950s, 
it was a considerable thing uh, to purge the unions. Read the unions were accused of being communist organizations. I am often brought to my attention by my associates because I'm an outspoken socialist and communist that according to the nationwide agreement of the union I'm in fact work for what? that uh, communists cannot be a member of the organization. It dates back to the 50s, someplace in labor law, uh, but it's been a feature of nationwide contracts and you can still find it. Um, but anyhow, the other thing that happened is it, it also had a terrible effect upon the organized labor movement is that possibly the best organizers who were these socialists, uh, the organizations uh, removed them. And it certainly had a dampening effect on the overall movement. It's considered by some to be the thing that uh, caused some real issues and why the movement is not as widespread as perhaps it should be today. Um, Regarding May Day itself, for many, many years at the College of Complexes, we, on May Day, we performed a play called Cell 29, which I edited uh, regarding the event at Haymarket. Uh, we sort of just got tired of doing it every year, but uh, we did keep the memory alive here at the College of Complexes at, as terms of May Day and its origins. Um, if you want more information on the Haymarket event, I recommend the website of the Illinois Labor History Society, which has extensive information at its website. But nevertheless, every year at the college, we always have, and for many years, as long as I can remember, recognize May Day as a day dedicated to discussing issues of employment. Um, I heard a little bit here about uh, political parties. I've been affiliated with the Green Party since its inception. Um, I can tell you three things that regarding this, uh, that there are issues regarding third parties. And the first one that right now is ballot access, getting on the ballot itself. Uh, the second real issue is finding qualified candidates. We find, I'm sorry, we, we have people seeking to be serve as our candidates who are simply not qualified to occupy a, an office in the government. I set the example, the woman we interviewed who wanted to run a campaign that God was angry with the United States and was punishing the nation, um, something like that. And the other thing is, and I don't have an answer to this, uh, the third parties have never been able to get support from the voters. I mean, maybe one, three, five, ten percent 10%, we did very well in the Green Party. We won presidential campaign, which is about the only singular achievement but outside of that, there seems to be some reticence on the part of the voters, and they're easy to blame, so why not blame them, you know? Uh, and last of all, regarding uh, organized labor in general, there was some talk of quote reform. We talk about this all the time, union officials among themselves. What direction should we do? I have sat through endless number of meetings on this. Right now, there is legislation called the PRO Act, which is to correct some of the issues that impediments to organizing. There's been other manifestations of this, uh, Free Employee, Free Choice Act, and any other uh, versions of that. Um, yeah, incrementally, um, we do need, it is, there is difficult to organize a union and the employers have gotten very good at this. Law firms exist entirely to combat any organized movement. They'll delay, delay. Uh, you have to be real tenacious 
and put a lot of effort in it because they will pose a countless number of obstacles and challenges. To and I'm amazed sometimes, and they will stop at nothing, no expense whatsoever. Um, they will do anything possible uh, to preclude. Sometimes I'm amazed um, from me having an organized workforce. Uh, the other thing that needs to be done and returning to the problem of, of uh, free market capitalism. Uh, I have a, see a real problem with free market capitalism since in the 19, since beginning around the 80s, uh, the disparity between the rich and the poor has made the United States the worst social stratification among any country I can think of. I even gave a lecture on this at the college. Uh, the CEO averages, depending on who you look to, uh, sometimes uh, they earn 385 times more than the average employee in the company. We were talking about Nabisco, the woman in charge of that company earns an amazing 534 times more money than the average employee in the company. Now to say, well, is there a problem here? Yes, that kind of comes to mind that, yeah, that doesn't seem right. I don't know, but I, yeah, and say, yeah, I don't like isms. Yeah, that kind of ism, I don't like at all. And Al, thanks a lot, sir. Uh, I enjoyed your talk and please hey. come again and give us an update on uh, direction or RW and right. what you do. Thank you. All right, Bob, you're up next. Okay, I hope Ellen Connolly's in hearing distance of this. Um, she mentioned uh, women's right to abortion. Uh, I don't know where she gets that from. Uh, I don't see anywhere in the Constitution guaranteeing anybody the right to kill another life, another another human. Uh, matter of fact, the 14th Amendment, I believe, says that we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So the fetus also has a right to life. Who, you know, has, who is protecting uh, that person's right? And it has to be us. So, uh, so that's that. Um, also, uh, you know, Conley and uh, as I think maybe others made reference to all the war machine and how we spend a third of our budget on it and blah, blah, blah. Well, that is one of the purposes of government. I mean, that is one of the legitimate functions of government. That's what I want my government to, to, to spend its money on is on, uh, the national defense on police on the court system and, and protecting my rights. That's what government is for. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, you look at the horrible job we've done in Afghanistan under Biden, this miserable withdrawal we've had. Uh, you know, of course, the Chinese are just eating this up now. The Chinese, you know, have a border on, on Afghanistan and uh, they are now going to be uh, poised to essentially uh have have their mitts on all the all the lithium that's there um you know, that, so copper that, and rare earths yeah yeah all that kind of stuff so you know we just we just handed that all over to china because you know they're gonna they're gonna bargain with the taliban and they're gonna and you know they're gonna get you know access to all those resources so yeah this i don't know i, I i'm so upset about the biden thing but that's just not his only failure. But a good point here to bring up is it about you know uh, Marx said, well, why are why are people voting for uh, you know like Trump? Well, geez, how do you like what we got now? How do you like having your currency debauched? Uh, oh, you know, the thing is, it, it this is you know this is never good for working people. They always say unions, you know, and Democrats are you know to help help working people, but it always ends up hurting them. I mean, go take a look at Detroit. I, been, I was in Detroit a couple of years ago for a conference, and I got a firsthand view of, of Detroit post the you know the the autom you know the great automobile era, the heyday. And I live not I don't live far from Gary. I live in Hammond, Indiana. So uh, I, I, I'm you know 
in close contact with Gary. And that's another, you know, city and in industry that's been destroyed, the steel industry, uh, by unions, you typically because of the because of uh, you know wages that outstrip outstrip production. Uh, co you know, co companies can't afford it. They uh, you know they 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 start closing plants down. They start moving plants offshore and blah blah blah. And uh, so what, what ends up happening uh, happening is these union guys uh, then they they lose their jobs. Then the you know then all the surrounding businesses go down with them. So. So that, you know, I don't see how joining a union helps do anything other than destroy yourself. And I guess if you have a death wish, I guess you would join a union because the, they will then, you know, you'll be out of a job soon and won't be able to get a, you know, a job anywhere else because your job will have left the country or have been automated out of, uh, out of existence. Um, I'm trying to think of anything I might... Uh, I've got a short rebuttal, Bob. Hey, Bob, after. what if the boss wants to give your job to his son? That's his prerogative. Oh, yeah, you know, by, speaking of that now, um, Charlie, you know, Charlie is, you know, again, uh, talking about, you know, his his uh, um, uh, envy of these people that make more money than him. Well, these because these people have brought more value somewhere along the line, or it's one of their relatives did, and maybe they're enjoying that. But the reason the uh, the reason Steve Be Steve Bezos or what's his name Bezos from Amazon, you know the re he makes Amazon makes so much money because they're satisfying demands of the marketplace. People like picking up the you know they're getting on their computer and pushing a couple buttons and having their appliance delivered you know in two hours with free shipping. You know what I mean. So the CEOs have attributes that I am lacking, right? Well, yeah, exactly. Look at look, you know, they they put they they added all that value. Look at you know all these guys that, that these billionaires that you're so envious of, they they you know they brought huge value to the market. People give them their money because people feel they're getting a better deal. That that the product. What's the person on the assembly line do? They don't create any wealth, right? Labor creates no, wealth. no. They create wealth, but they get you know they get and they get paid you know. Guy on the assembly for, line. What's that? Really? Yeah, I mean the that guy. That woman in charge of the disco doesn't make one cookie. Some guy, some guy that's got an IQ of 104. He doesn't make one cookie. One guy that's got an IQ of 104 can go on the assembly line and and make thirty, forty thousand a year. Uh, putting bolts in, a, you know, on a, on a car or something, or putting, you know, mounting rims on a wheels on a rim or something. But um, yeah, I mean that that's he he doesn't. No one's forcing him to do it. No one's putting a gun up to his head, making him do it. You know, he could do it. All right, do it. all right, right. So uh, you know, this is all this is voluntary. Uh, this is voluntary uh, labor. So if you know if he doesn't want to do it, you know, other people will. Now I've worked in five, I was an industrial engineer for many years and I worked in many factories and I did time studies of many blue collar jobs of guys working on machines, stamping out parts and winding rotors and tinning leads and doing all kinds of stuff like that. And, uh, you know, there's, there's job rotation, you know, you don't always, have, just because your job is putting lug nuts on a wheel. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to do that, you know, 40 hours a week, maybe one day he's putting lug nuts on. The next day he might be putting fenders on. Then the next day he might be putting antennas oh, on or something like that. But the thing is, there's there's Instead things of like that. Headlights you put on tires. There's um. Oh, okay. Well, again, Before you guys <laughs> get into it, let me, let me... But anyway, it's all voluntary. If he doesn't like it, <laughs> if he doesn't like it, he, lights, he put on headlights. If he doesn't like it, he can he can leave and do other things. <laughs> and a lot of people do that. I know people. Hey, that, thanks, boss. I know people that work in the auto industry on the assembly line, that outside of work, uh, have other interests, and that they they, you know, my, I know this one guy. He's a photographer and a guitarist, and uh, he's got several beautiful guitars. He's got several beautiful cameras. And maybe, uh, you know, I think he's just going to work to get his pension and then quit and then probably do something, either go and, you know, have a band or maybe go get into photography or maybe both. But the thing is, people, Charlie, you're thinking, you, you look at like this, like these are jobs that people are like, like, like a prison sentence. No, people, 
people are using in their in their in their time off. They're taking that money they earned and they're inventing things. They're doing things. Oh, how nice. Okay, the okay, Charlie. You, the boss let you do whatever you want. And all right, before we get into it, let me get my rebuttal. Nice. Right. Okay, well, I'm gonna, okay, nice I'll, just just I'll, hold on because uh, I'll close I, it there. But yeah, but look how many. Just say look how look how many. You know, you started you up by whatever you want. <coughs> so so you People, I, people start jobs. You know, they're they're talking about there's like a new nine to five. It's it's now it's now like the five to nine. It's the people that get off work and then they're they're driving for Uber and okay. doing things like this because they're they're doing their own thing and they're making you know and maybe they're maybe they can uh, create their own business and quit that assembly line job. All right. I not think, enough money. They all right. I think, I think I uh, think let me let me get my rebuttal in because I think. I think I've got to educate you guys a little bit tonight on how on the benefits of capitalism, why it works. And I'm going to probably go to video tonight because I'm going to, I think this guy explains it a hell of a lot better than, than I could with the benefits of capitalism. So I'm going to do a little quick share screen here. Video is less than about five minutes long, but uh, I'm sure most of you guys have heard of Mark Levin before. Capitalism's a beautiful thing, you know. And we'll see if we can get it going here in a second here. You know, and we gotta get a, shit, come on. Okay, here we go. Supermarket the other day. Called... Oh, here we go. And how long has it been, ladies and gentlemen, when we've actually supported capitalism in this country as a people? It still amazes me, you know, you, you kind of live two lives, don't you? You have the everyday rush, and then you step back and you do some thinking. You sort of are more circumspect. And I was in a big supermarket the other day called Wegmans, not too far from the bunker, and I'm walking around here and I'm, you know, I'm thinking to myself, how many countries have a place like this? We walk into a store like this, and there's 10 different types of popcorn. We walk into a store like this and every fruit imaginable from all over the world is right there. Just throw it in your cart. The different types, styles, and kinds of bread make your head spin. Not, not just vanilla, strawberry, chocolate ice cream anymore, all kinds of stuff. We walk down the cereal row. Never seen so many types of cereal and so many different sizes of boxes. You, you go down the row, that has milk, the freezer section and the fridge section. I've never seen so many different types of milk, 2%, 1%, whole milk, schmo milk, this milk, organic milk, bad milk, chocolate milk, strawberry milk. Same with orange juice. It's not orange juice anymore. It's orange juice with pulp, without pulp, no acid, uh, whatever, this, that, the other. Look at the yogurt. It's just endless. You think that stuff just shows up? It's an enormously complex system of free mobility, free decisions that create this, this magnificent place called the supermarket. It's incredible if you just stop and think about it. What's involved? Just in buying eggs, what is involved? Raising chickens, feeding chickens, caring for chickens, collecting their eggs, washing the eggs, transporting the eggs, the container that the eggs come in. Where does that come from? Who manufactures that? The trucks that bring the eggs to the store. Their tires, who makes that? The hardware in the truck, the electrical system in the truck, and on and on. And then it comes to the store. The store is, is an enormously complex thing in and of itself. Capitalism. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And compared to what's going on in Venezuela, people are starving to death in a country that has the second or third highest reserve of oil, in a country that used to be a democracy, in a country that was the richest or one of the richest countries south of the border, that had a healthy working middle class, people breaking into the zoos to get the animals. They're starving to death and eating the animals in the zoo. The government nationalized the toilet paper manufacturing facilities 
because there's not enough toilet paper. And so they nationalize these things. And so there's actually less. People can't find toilet paper. People can't get basic medical coverage of any kind. There's almost no education going on in the country because the teachers can't teach. They're busy standing in line for five, six, eight, ten hours just to get some kind of morsel, something. Kids dying, malnourished, malnourished in Venezuela. Because all these schemes by the mastermind, they don't work. And as Reagan said, when the plans fail, the planners keep planning. It's impossible for Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or Paul Ryan or Nancy Pelosi, or Mitch McConnell, or Hugo Chavez, or any of the rest of them, to manage an economy. This class warfare, whether of the left or the pseudo-right, is incredibly destructive. It is Marx, as manifested in Alinsky, as manifested in these barkers and big mouths who don't know what the hell they're talking about, who spin history and spin facts and try to rile up people. They don't believe in republicanism, little r. They believe in mobocracy, as Aristotle called it. Mobocracy is not republicanism. Mobocracy is not constitutionalism. Mobocracy is not capitalism. Sure. Mobocracy is not freedom. It's a different form of tyranny. That's what it is. It's a different form of tyranny. And in the end, it'll make us poorer and less free. Wow. Tim. Tim, well, the thing is, Charlie, the thing is, Charlie, he, uh, hey, do you have a I'll video working on Charlie, I'll tell you, oh, tell you something right now. Factory. Charlie, the thing is, is that meat. most of your factories today are getting automated. Store. Most of them are now adopting robotics, I'll Charlie. A video of your, assembly line, your assembly line jobs are no longer traditional because they're being roboticized yeah. where those people get better jobs like designing robots, learning a lot more about things. The American capitalistic system has delivered the goods for the last 300 years. That's and right. right. Now, your, vis right. your visual Why don't you look at video? Hey, why don't you tell video? Do, you know, children, like I said, there, there comes a point where you do need staff. unions, yes. But How about to condemn the entire video? goddamn system and throw it out and link with these stupid Marxists is crazy. Yeah, Our bring American in the way of down. life right now because of the stupid class warfare that's going on is crazy. Now, I understand, yes, we have a big uh, increase in the way we are doing things. And yes, it's, and if you get these monopolies, it's called the antitrust laws, which happened under, you know, Roosevelt and other, and other companies. If they're too big, Use the antitrust laws. The thing is, though, Charlie, what you forget is that even in the last 30 years, we have seen a really big thing called the Internet. 20 years ago, you wouldn't have even heard Tell of it. I mean, 25 years ago, you wouldn't have even heard of Google. Amazon was just getting started. And we had to design. The, and the funny thing is, yeah. one of the biggest, most highly biggest retailers around called Sears went debunked because they couldn't innovate it fast enough to embrace the new technology. Charlie, as far as I'm concerned, unions are great. Uh, they do work. They do balance off some of the co countervailing pro problems of corporate power. But without corporate power, without capitalism, you wouldn't have the goods. You'd still have people in huts, in farms. The industrial, I'm very revolution, for the, indu the industrial revolution, the industrial revolution, the capitalists delivered the goods. We're better off with free sweatshops. trade. There you go, Bob. I appreciate having sweatshops. Tell me what you like, what you don't like, what you don't like. You going to school? Well, I don't like. I don't like children you having to work. Is that that children I don't, don't work anymore, don't anymore after they industrialize, Charlie. Mean? Um, no, I like to make, I like to make a, a comment. Okay, okay, okay. We, we're going to settle down. Okay. Okay. Like go ahead and make, and make your comment. Can I make a comment? I think I'm kind You'll of... get the last I'm, word, Mark. Can I make a comment? Yes, Just please, for a minute? Yeah, Sorry. Okay. So um, I feel it's a good thing that we listen to different views, but I also feel sad that people tend to um, keep their views as exactly what they have been held. So if that's the case, like 
we are not learning anything new and not expanding our horizon. I try to be open-minded and to see uh, some points from each, each person, good points from each person. Having said that, I also admire, like I noticed uh, Tim and Charlie, you two have very different views, but you still have friends, seems yeah. like. You're still friends, so I admire- I have a lot of respect for, for Charlie. Oh, good. So I, I admire you for, for that. People, people who have different views, they just like fight and they act as enemies. So I admire you for holding different views, but I just wish you two can listen more to each other's right, right. other points and to kind of not to reject out, out of hand because uh, they just think differently. I think both of you have some valid points. <laughs> Bob, yeah. you had something to say real quick, and then we'll let Mark get the last word. Oh no, I'm, I'm good. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm just clapping. That wasn't my, that wasn't my hand up. Good. Vicky, you want to contribute here tonight or not at all? No. Okay. All right, Mark. Um, you'll get the last word, and then we'll shut the college down, and we'll keep the uh, Zoom call open for a little bit for anybody who wants to talk afterwards. So. Take as much time as you need, Mark, and unmute, and uh, please give us the last word and what you thought tonight. Uh, excuse me for one second. I, I got to get a prop, and I'll be like two seconds, and I'll be right back. Okay, that's just fine. And I think we're going to be doing it. Charlie, I hope I did all right with you. And uh, That guy didn't, didn't explain how those products got in that store. Were they like magic? No, it came through logistics. Well, they come out of the sky. It was called the power of price of and sky. signaling, Charlie. Right, right. Yeah. Well, the power of price and signaling. When the price goes up, more are made, more companies get into it, price goes back to normal. When they're out. There's Charlie, an expression. Charlie, you look at Charlie. what I look at, but you do not Charlie. see what I see. Oh, Charlie, Charlie. I've seen it all. Most of your so called. When you go to the supermarket, he didn't see all anything. Right, Charlie, he I want to ask. He is a farm worker. Okay, Charlie. All right, Lana, 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 go ahead and make your last comment. We'll let the market. No, I just want to ask Charlie. I want to ask Charlie a question. Charlie, why you don't like capitalism? Why? What? What, what are you questioning about? Okay. What you don't know, I like? I can't why, hear you. Why? Why you don't like it? What? What? It's like. Tell me what the reason is absolutely no, no reason not to lie because, you know, if you have money a little bit, you can go to store, you can buy vegetables, fruits, you know, it's not problem. You have to stay in line like in Russia, like in third countries, you know, why you don't like it? Why are you questioning? Tell me. Why? Because I know how that strawberry was picked. Ah, uh, what? You don't know. You don't know about how working conditions are to make products. You have no idea. You have uh, no so idea how products are made. I do. And uh, you know, you never they, wonder. You just think they just come out of the sky, no, right? No. I know. I know how products are made. I I was an industrial engineer for years. <laughs> I know well, you should know how <laughs> cash, I know how paint cars were made. I was I actually used to work for you. UTLX, the, right. the, 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 uh, the tanks you're always worried about right. that are going to tip over and explode on the All train right. because We're you getting... guys uh, stop your pipelines, which are so much better. All right. So can, and we specific, the... can we be right. specific and ask each person if we are for $15 minimum wage? I mean, that's unambiguous. Do you, are you for or against the $15 minimum wage? Yeah, why not? I it, think it's, it's here to stay right now because it's gonna you're gonna need workers and they're starting to get a little scarce. So I think it's coming here no matter what we think. Well, there there, there is I mean uh what we think what probably people, what right? we think probably tight labor markets matter, tight labor markets, markets have already been paying over you know, attitude towards people, workers. Yeah, but what if people desperate? What if people crazy, desperate, looking for a job, okay. any job? What if they don't, you know, they, they, they in panic, they don't have money to pay rent. They're ready to take any job. $15 minimum wage, it's not, it's not bad. No, but the thing is, they're not going to get hired because they're not worth $15 an hour. So what's going to happen, you go, go, look at, uh, go look at Walgreens downtown, right on 122 South Michigan. 
Walk in there at any, any time of the day or night, you'll see a maximum of two cashiers there. They got about 10 registers, but there's never more than two people working. Even on and the busiest, much, even on even on Christmas Eve, two people and working. How much, and how much in I've got photographs to prove this, by the way, as, as well. I have photographed these is, lines of people. All right, all right. Yeah. Let's let uh okay. get Ginny this after all right, let's let's uh Continue this after we let Mark okay. Burroughs make oh, yeah, his okay, final okay. comment, and then we'll wrap it up, and then we can continue arguing for all. So, Mark, it's Minimum all yours. wage is a whole thing on its own. Mark, it's all yours. So uh, I'd like to uh, thank you all for having me, and, and I appreciate the, 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 uh, uh, the, the kind words and compliments, and I, I appreciate the jousting as well. Uh, uh, that's all part of the uh, it, it, it's all part of the process and uh, uh, so like like I said uh, uh, yeah. we, we find we find the common ground where we can find it and uh, ag agree to disagree and, and uh, uh, come back to it later uh, when appropriate and applicable in a in a civilized manner preferably yeah. and uh, uh, um, but but uh, the the process is is uh, I do want to say a few things. I, I mean I can't uh, uh, I, I I couldn't do this this uh, uh, entire thing justice. But I do want to make a few points. Uh, as far as uh, you know, jobs being being sent offshore, this has been a problem for for, for the working class in this country. And, 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 and that's a, one of the reasons why we, why we need international solidarity. If workers in the third world were making 20, 30 bucks an hour, then it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the financial incentive to, uh, to uh, close up shop. And, and so that's, that's one of the uh, uh, international labor solidarity. Uh, um, that, that's why I'm for it. Um, as far as... Uh, 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 I mean, I've lived, experienced unbridled, uh, runaway, no checks uh, capitalism. I've, I've uh, experienced that on the railroad and in my other jobs. And so uh, 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 I, I don't, I've been taught that all my life. Uh, 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 I've lived it. The bulk of my life and and so uh uh uh, uh, uh it, it, it'll be it would be hard to convince me uh, otherwise uh but but uh, uh i that, that like i said that's what i grew up with uh in school as well as uh, uh have lived it my my entire life so that contributes to the opinions uh conclusions and analysis that that i've arrived at and um uh, uh, um, there was one other, there was one other thing I wanted to respond to, but, um, but anyway, um, so yeah, uh, 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 thanks for having me. Thanks for a lively, uh, uh, lively discussion. And, and, uh, even, even though obviously there's some disagreements it, the, that the process itself of, of, of discussing and interacting and debating, it, it, it's all part of the process of, uh, uh, uh of, of, of advancing and moving forward. And, and so uh, um, I, I appreciate being invited and to be a part of this. And so uh, uh, I'm, got, I'm not gonna be able to stick around. Uh, I've, I've, uh, uh, I've got to take care of some things. And so, uh, but uh, I wanna thank you all and uh, bid you all good night. Thank you. Mark. Thanks a lot. And at this point, we're gonna stop the taping. Good night, everybody from the College of Complexes recording.